Hello and welcome to episode 42 of the Player 3 Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Croft, and alongside me we have the always visually stunning Larry Hunt. Hi. Scoot just a smidge closer there, Larry. Oh. No, 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 with, the, with your chair. There you go. Get on in the shot here. And over here on my other side, we have, he can fix you a nice, delicious glass of Pepsi and steal your daughter's heart, ladies and gentlemen, Doug Martin. I love being on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the way to my extreme right, we have Benjamin D. Hankins. The D stands for Dunn gave up on giving him a nickname. Yep. And this... This is the Player 3 Podcast. We get together every Monday and we talk about video games. Then we push this out to you via iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher. You can watch us live on twitch.tv slash player 3 podcast every Monday at 5 Eastern. Or you can catch the archive of it on youtube.com slash player 3 podcast. Boys, how are we doing? Strong. Tired. Uh, Boiling. Boisterous. I don't know. It's good is it hot? <laughs> no, okay, I was uh, just ben, trying to give Ben, ben a word. Ben is, ben is crowning. Oh, yeah. oh gosh! Yeah, we use the word That's "crowning" weird. a lot in our Madden review. <laughs> but, but why? The cusp of because it's a, it's a metaphor birth. for the podcast. It's a me- it, I was waiting for the microphone. It's then the it's episode. a metaphor for the podcast. It was episode one. We were crowning into that episode. Yes, the the pains of childbirth. Now we're all covered in mucus and the immersion from the dark abyss of. A canal that will not be named. <laughs> <laughs> the canal that shall not be named. I think we broke Larry. Larry's the only one who's witnessed this live. Yeah. And in person. It's, it's, uh, I don't memorable. want no part of that. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to move on. Because we're going to go ahead and just get this week started like we get every week started. Over. With the releases of the week. Releases of the week. Clap, clap. Happy birthday, Bruce. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bruce. You got to ham it up. We hammed it up last week. Did you? Yeah, you weren't here last week because you were celebrating your papa's birthday. It was my Faja's birthday. That's right. Faja, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Releasing on both, bo- both consoles this week, we have Madden 16. We have a ton of coverage for this game over on YouTube.com slash Player3Podcast. We just recorded our first episode of P3P Talk Sports Games with uh, Ben hosting. Yes. You did a great job, Ben. I did an okay job. So you can go catch all of our thoughts there. We don't want to. We don't want to muck up the podcast with all of the uh, the sports game stuff because it's so yeah, so, for that. so niche, and I don't want Larry to do this. I noticed you do this. Yeah, it's for fun. You just stare at the screen. Yeah, what of it? These are my stretchy pants. You want me to it's stop? For fun. Nothing. And then <laughs> next on the list we have Dishonored Definitive Edition. Yet another reboot. I'm really excited about that one. Um, Are you? I, I missed that one on the last gen, um, so I won't be doing it this week. I probably won't be doing it anytime soon, but I'm ready. Or ever. It'll happen. I play everything. I'm sure that's what I, you I said. I play a lot of things. Console. Yeah, that's true. And that's everything that's going to be releasing on both consoles this week. And then... Larry can't get his mic said. Gosh, that is a, <laughs> well, an incredibly annoying sound. It keeps just slowly fading away from my face. Oh, you probably need to do this then. Oh. Get to the weights now. All right. Yeah. I've never mic'd before. And now, uh, releasing on PlayStation 4 this week, we have Back to Bed. Back to Bed is a whimsical and challenging puzzle game with not of this world environments that blur the lines between fantasy and reality. A Subob, a Subob, Sabob, Sabobe. Sumo. Sibulba? Sumo named Sibulba. Simba. <laughs> As Subob, you must defy gravity, avoid enemies and treacherous encounters. I'm sorry. I didn't even and use unlikely touches. objects like fish, bridges, and giant sized apples to guide Bob back to the safety of his bed. Looks like every Tim Burton like film ever. touches is your kingdom. That is Simba. true. It does look like a Tim Burton film. It will be yours oh, okay, when you of age. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To claim it. Number five, French fries on the side. <laughs> I don't understand any of them. <laughs> uh, then, we, then we have Calvino Noir. This beautiful history of noir cinema is a big inspiration for Calvino Noir. That's where this indie team has drawn ideas for the look and story of the game. The classic film noir plot and characters are there, but in their own format, which is more closely inspired by films such as Blade Runner and games such as Dosex. So, Blade Runner. 
one of the ultimate Harrison Ford films. So what is it inspired by? I felt like it told us it was inspired by a thousand different things. Wait, I always think Blade Runner is the... Uh, the one where they're like, the diamonds? No. No I always one think it's ever thinks the, about that movie You know the ever. movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger was having to run away Total from... Recall. Terminator. Total Recall. The Running Man. <laughs> yes, that's the, the one. Running Man? That's referenced yeah. later in this podcast. That's interesting. And you don't know it. Yet, but now you do because I said it. Mike, super short show. Surprise. We are we are connected, connected physically, mentally, and telepathically. Bodily. Emotionally. Fid- Capsule <laughs> Force. <laughs> Capsule Force. It is the year 1999, which is not true. It is the future, which is also not true. After years of intergalactic battles, technology gave birth to advanced galaxy capturing nope. capsule C they were crowning <laughs> none <laughs> these, of this happened though this, why is he this telling advanced us? galaxy see, capturing see, hold capsule on, hold, this is typical liberal media just lying to us right off the get go <laughs> it's all propaganda it is the year 1999 <laughs> it is the future it's all propaganda <laughs> tools that Earth's <laughs> world leaders readily supplied to their intergalactic forces, but many of these forces have gone rogue and are now fighting amongst themselves for these powerful orbs Orbs. Herbs. Herbs. There's a di- uh, Dying Light demo coming out this week. Check that out if cool. you've not played uh, that game. the DLC or just a demo for the game? So I think it's just for the game. Oh, okay. Yep. Interesting. Next, we have really I late. Am Bread. This looks deep. And I Am Bread, which is also a lie. I am not bread. I am a human being. Joe Logano is the main character. Prove <laughs> and, it. Prove and, proves on you. In I Am Bread, your goal is to become toast. That's it. This is where the general world knowledge stuff comes in. As a player, we assume you generally know what is required to turn bread into toast, which is a toaster, or more simple than that, heat. So your goal in each level is to seek out or create a heat source by any means necessary in order to toast yourself. So you're trying to commit suicide every level. No, that no, no, sounds no, no, like no. a plan. You're trying to ev- you're trying to evolve. Like you start out as toast, and it's really like a it's the American dream. Like you're building yourself up into something greater. Pulling yourself like, up. By what the is trips. better? Like you go get an omelet at the store at the at the omelet store at the omelet store. <laughs> and you're like, you pull it up, you take your coffee, you put it down. On you're the like dash. you're like servant. Um, servant? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like come come to me. And, and it's like, 1998. We you all you have order, robot servants. You order your <laughs> <laughs> you order your omelet, and they're like, well, you want like uh, hash browns, hush puppies, toast, and you're like toast. Yeah, toast. Every time, toast. A little depends butter on, on there. Yeah. Maybe a little cinnamon, depending on the the season. Cinnamon. A little Frenchy cinnamon toast. Frenchy Barracuda. That's deep fried. That's hard. Is <laughs> is it, uh, is it? <laughs> father-in-law once worked security for Hart. That's an awesome. <laughs> Mother of God. There's the one that did Barracuda? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it sad that that game looks really fun, actually? It actually does. Like you're, I, you're just a piece of bread, and on this picture, you're riding a skateboard. <laughs> it feels like one of those games that, like, you come home from a long day of smoking marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and you just really have the munchies, so you got to make some toast, man. You're like, I can't do it. I, I can't afford real bread, but I bought this game a couple days ago. I'm going to eat this CD raw. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's still the thing, right? <laughs> Mega Man Legacy <laughs> Collection featuring Mega Man 1 through 6. Re- re- Reverently reborn through the Eclipse engine, which takes the game's 8-bit source elements and converts them into crisp HD goodness. Reborn. One could say that this game is crowning. <laughs> Recrowning. <laughs> Recrowning. Recrowning. That's it. Recronation. <laughs> then we have Nova 111. Nova 111 or 111 or 111 is a Binary. sci-fi turn-based adventure game with an innovative twist of real-time action, fighting aliens in space for science. That sounds super innovative. I feel like we wouldn't fight the aliens. We would rather observe them. Or birth them. Could. No one knows. Or take them and say that we created them. There we go. These are down my You made these aliens? Now I made these aliens. (laughs) Then we have One Piece, Pirate Warriors 3. Enjoy the original story of One Piece from Fushia Village, uh, where everything has started, to the kingdom of Dressrosa. A mysterious island dominated by the evil Don Quixote do Flamingo. Will your resolution be strong enough to defeat the most dangerous foes, including Do Flamingo, Hordy Jones, Caesar Clown, and many more? Question I mark. It. I doubt it. <laughs> I've uh, I've actually seen that anime. Yeah, Is that how you say it. Yeah, you oh, did, it's, you it's a real it. one. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a real it's anime. pretty good actually. 
this guy ate this fruit and it made him super stretchy, but it, He's a, like, he also fast, cannot punches. swim. Like, it takes away any ability he can ever have to swim. It's like when you try to float your stretch arm strong in the bathtub. Yeah. And so, I don't know if that works or not. I, don't. I feel like he, that was a bad reference. He wants to be reference. the king of the pirates, mm. but... He can't swim, so that causes some and he's, uh, twisty situations. He also has scurvy. Spoiler alert. Oh, poor he's fella. Ned from uh, Fantastic Four. What's the guy's name? I can't remember his name. The guy who made the teleporter. Who, who Mr. Fantastic. What's his actual name? That's, that's his name. Ron. Oh, <laughs> yes, Ron Weasley. <laughs> Ron, Ron <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> this next game looks uh, totally B.A. Then we have Shishimi. Shishimi is a cute up about the story of the fishy defending its home waters against an army of mysterious invaders, squids, pelicans, reverse mermen, bears, and more are overrunning the sea, and it's up to you bears? to stop them. <laughs> Is yeah. that a reverse mermen thing? Like a, like I a guess you're a fish on the top. Is it like a transgender commentary? <laughs> you're the one who reads into these things, you English major. That game's not coming out on PS4. Then we have Tina's Toy Factory. Tina's Sold. Toy... Tina's Toy Factory is a classic match three puzzle game with the addition of local multiplayer. You break up and here you go. Since the Halo is not going to do it for you, go get Tina's Toy Factory. Play split screen with your wife because you up. break up in crates by matching three in a row, which releases toy parts. You then combine the toy parts to make complete toys. How much electricity is running through that mic? Huh? Not enough to kill me. No, never mind. Maim? But also not enough. No. To, 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 to plenty to make me feel real bad. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make me sad. <laughs> It'll give me boo boos. <laughs> then I think a game that we're all at least intrigued by, some excited about, some intrigued by, until dawn. Sold. Experience fear like you never have have before through the power of PS4. Every decision you make and your terrifying search for answers could mean the difference between life and death. But for who? Make your choices and carve out your own unique story. Let's stop here for a second and let's talk. Because in this game, I think it's nine friends go to a cabin. To commemorate the death of a friend, something like that, and it turns into a classic slasher film. Mm-hmm. And you're making well, it can, decisions. I think. Uh, I think what it becomes is dependent on is dependent upon your decisions or something like that. Yes, I don't know how it works. So but it can uh, just be a r- romantic comedy. Yes, what you're saying. Possibly, to me. possibly. <laughs> Fifty first dates. The video. <laughs> make it so. <laughs> but uh, that game looks really cool to me because that is the game at the beginning where you decide what scares you more like mm-hmm. uh, like right, atmosphere right. jump scares or gore or whatever and the game kind of crafts itself around you uh and early reports are saying it takes about 10 hours to finish on one playthrough but it's there's one, of, a way it's one can, of those things where you want to yeah. go back and play it again kind of do things differently because there's a way you can play it where everybody dies and there's a way you can play it where everybody survives and then everything in between so a lot of replay value to be found hmm, there that's cool uh, next item on the list. I don't know if this is VVVVVV or 555555 or just. Or three W's with spaces in between. I think we're just going to refer to it as. Like you're shivering. Or like you're revving up a car. Help Captain Viridian flip to find five crew members, 20 hard to reach trinkets, and save a dimension on the brink of destruction. It's a space opera in the most unique Whoa. scale with a style that only can bring you. Can we, st- <laughs> can we start opera. singing these, uh, these descriptions? Help Captain Viridian flip to find five crew members, 20 hard to reach trinkets, and save a dimension on the brink of the destruction. destruction. It's a space opera in the most unique scale with a style that only <laughs> can bring you. That was good. I'll allow it. Okay. Sold. All right. That's everything that's releasing on the PS4. And cool. then the big thing releasing on Xbox One this week is the Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Oh, that's which I too, did huh? not remember Jeez. was releasing this week. I, I forgot myself. And I'm going to be really torn between this and Madden now. What, what's the price point of that bad boy? $40. Yeah. So $40. for $40, you get the completely remastered version of one, and then you get the backwards compatibility uh, compatible versions of two, three, oh, you do get one, those with that. and Judgment. Oh, I see. I thought it was just the first game. It's the first game remastered, and right, then you right. get all of the Xbox 360 games. That's a deal. Set to That's a deal. That is a deal. See, I was going to get this, but then I was like, I really don't care about that. And if that, Gears 1 is backwards compatible. So I bought Gears 1. I've been playing through it. Right. That's 40 bucks. 40 bucks. It is a deal. I won't t- it comes out it. tomorrow. It comes out tomorrow. I might be spending a lot of money. Yeah. And Reed Richards is, is who you're trying to think of. What? I don't know. Reed you were Richards. Reed Richards. Of, of Mr. Fantastic. 
Yep. His glasses. Thanks, thanks to Ryan. Stanley thanks, Ryan. Makes, Stanley makes all those alliterative names. Yep. Alliterative. Uh, yes. Jeez. All right. <laughs> so those are your releases of the week. Releases of the week. Clap, clap. <sighs> clap, 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 clap. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> clap, 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 clap. <laughs> this is a big week. There's a lot of stuff coming out. There's a ton of There's stuff. A lot of out. stuff out and not enough time in the day. Or enough money in the pocket. <laughs> oh, I got yes. Yeah, I, I don't or understand because you've got, got so many pockets on you right now. I just hit every button you yeah, have you on your phone. May have shut off our timer. <laughs> no, we're good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I was telling you earlier that I've decided I don't, I don't care about fashion anymore. And cargo pants are awesome and utilitarian and comfortable, and I'm going to wear them. I thought when you sent that tweet, I thought you said utilitarian. <laughs> And I was like, I don't understand what he's saying by you saying utilitarianism. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Isn't like leader anti disestablishment dysentery. And that was about cargo <laughs> <Dysentarian>. shorts. <laughs> I, got the I lost. I was lost in the sauce. That tweet was about cargo <laughs> shorts. <laughs> and ben, I, and ben I, just said he was lost in the sauce. If you didn't catch that, which means he was hammered drunk. Just, I never under. <laughs> just so I always drunk. say that, and I don't realize that that's what it means until after someone explains it to me. Gosh. Every time. Every time. He's, he's looking at church, and he's like, I'm just, I'm just lost in the sauce. And I'm like, that means you're drunk. <laughs> I hope you slip up and say that while you're preaching one day. <laughs> I'm just lost in the sauce Yeah, right now, yeah I'm just lost in the sauce, and I'm like. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> All right. Mary brought me, man. <laughs> a little inside joke. That's a little, a little inside, inside joke. joke. A little I'll inside tell you that humor. story later. It's a good story. I'll tell you it because it happened to me. It's kind of oh, dark too. That tweet was about uh, cargo shorts, okay. and it was in response to Guante. <laughs> did, what did? Guante supports cargo shorts. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna delete all of his music off of my phone. <laughs> he may have been doing it ironically, and it went over my head. Though you should double check. He is an English teacher. A former English teacher. So anyway. All right, moving on to the news. News with the podcast, guys. Oh my <laughs> you should have told me to have came it up. <laughs> yeah. it up with news from the podcast, guys. <laughs> all right. Give it to you. Everyone shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> Seth says that, and then he goes, I didn't mean that. I mean that. I mean that. <laughs> all right, first item on the list. Uh, Xbox One executive says we're doing things that uh, can't be, quote, can't be done on PS4. All right. This is according to GameSpot. According to Xbox executive, Kudo Sonoda. I'm I'm deferring to you on this. Is that right? Sonoda? I would guess that. All right. The (laughs) Xbox One has, quote, a lot more going on, end quote, than the PlayStation 4 and other competing platforms. In a a new interview, Sonoda talks about how Xbox One uh, features like backwards compatibility as well as cross-play and cross-buy with PC give the Xbox One the upper hand. Quote, for a long time, we've had PC gamers and console gamers who weren't really really able to play together. That's why crossplay is still such a powerful idea. You should be able to play what you love and play together regardless of what device you're playing on. It's about connecting people. It's a really unique value that only we can offer. Offer. You still need very gamer-focused values, but there's lots of things you can do with our technology. We've really got a lot more going on uh, than, in brackets than our competitors. We're doing things that can't be done on any other console. End quote. So, just wanted to throw this in there and see what you guys thought about it. First of all, I really thought that you were going to throw up in the middle of that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> I, <had to> think <laughs> I was wondering what you were laughing at. Um, but aside from that, it was I, hitting me. I saw the uh, you know your note in the show notes about this, and I expressed an expletive. I was like, "Ain't no way." Ain't <laughs> it no wasn't way. that though. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was not what I thought in my brain. But in my um, brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, then I read the article, and I was like, "You know what? You got a point." Like. That's why I love owning both consoles because both of them bring so much to the table, and definitely Xbox is bringing a lot more this year alone to the table. Um, you've got the backwards compatibility, like they mentioned in the article. You've got um, your your crossplay coming in between PC, which everybody's got a PC. Not everybody has a PC, but I would wager ninety five percent of the population owns a PC. Science. I would not go that high. <laughs> Seventy five. There are a lot of people who like Mac. Seventy five. I. I'd go more to 60. Wait, are we talking about the known world, or are we talking about, like, first world like, computer-owning like, countries? Oh, first yeah, world, yeah, 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 yeah. I was only thinking about, about America. Uh, percentage, percentages okay. of computer-owning individuals. You're right. You're probably right. You're right, dog. Um, but, yeah, so th- this uh, really opens up uh, Microsoft's, you know, that kind of gaming community. Um, 
I don't know. It's really it's really interesting, and plus, not to mention all the first party exclusives they have coming um, mm-hmm. to fruition in the next fiscal fiscal year. Crowning, if you will. Uh, <laughs> Crowning, if you will. Exploding out of the birth canal like a. Uh, <laughs> now it's. But, it, it, <laughs> but the whole idea of like the Xbox doing things the PS4 can't do, like the PlayStation's going to have exclusives. Like, right. Like that really isn't a oh, point. No, you write too. You write too. But I agree with all of it, though. Hello? And like. I feel like PlayStation will be. At some point, be able to do backwards compatibility. It's not like they're. It's like they're just making a definitive statement that PlayStation will never ever be able to do this. And that's what it's saying. That's just yeah. what it's, how it sounds to me. And it's not true. I mean, PlayStation could. I feel like they could. They could do that. They have the uh, the capability um, <coughs> digitally right now. So I mean, it doesn't mean that they can't move it to physical. But now, will they? It's, I mean, I mean, you can do it with, the, with your Vita. But the thing is, like, Sony doesn't really have. They have. P, they have computers. But they don't have. I'm saying through PlayStation he's now. Talking, yeah, he's talking backwards compatibility through PlayStation now. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. Well, and I mean, there's this marriage of Microsoft and PC gaming now, where mm-hmm. like it just makes sense. Mm-hmm. But if really what if really the point you want to be driving is that people should be able to play with whoever they want to play with, well, where's Microsoft's push to do cross platform play, right, mm-hmm. and those sorts of things? And I mean, that doesn't necessarily speak to like what he's trying to get across in this article, but. Uh, you know, if that's a value, like, why are they not working to be able to bring some parity in that as well? But uh, I kind of agree with you, Ben, where it's not necessarily that PlayStation can't do some of these things. I don't know. I don't ever think that Sony is going to have the relationship with PC gaming to do these things. Right. Um, and But it's more of a matter of will they do these things? And I don't think they will. Mm-hmm. I think PlayStation is kind of laser focused and maybe almost laser focused to a fault with everything that xbox is doing to try to catch up um but it's not a matter of whether or not the hardware can, can do it it's a matter of whether or not the company decides to do it if it's profitable or not yes yeah well no right. it mm, it can be it can be very profitable ea access but will they do it yeah yeah EXS. that's right E-X-S. you were gonna say something Oh, I'd be surprised if PlayStation goes that route anytime soon. But I think that I don't think this guy's totally off base on what he's saying, but I think he is over exaggerating how beneficial all this is. <laughs> like I don't oh, think it's his it's business. Yeah. You're right. I agree. You I right. agree with you. I mean that's <laughs> to sell what he wants to sell. I mean he's trying to push he's trying to push it bigger than make it bigger than what it has to be. So bigger. Stroker. All right. <laughs> Next no. item on the list. Witcher 3 mods could come to Xbox One and PS4, but nothing certain yet. Uh, this is from GameSpot. CD Projekt Red today announced plans to offer new mod tools for the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt on PC. Mods could also make their way to the Xbox One and PS4 versions, but there are technical hurdles that prevent that from being a certainty. Quote, we are thinking about it, but it's a way more complex process to do this on console, so we can't give you any details now. End quote. Uh, well, no, they continue on. It's really important for us to uh, partition the Witcher community uh, to not for us not to partition the Witcher community and allow access to mods to console gamers too. We're considering various approaches to solve this and started initial talks with first parties about this. End quote. Uh, we we've seen this already with Fallout being uh, something that they. Uh, want to introduce on, on the consoles and are going to introduce on the consoles. And now here comes CD Projekt Red with The Witcher wanting to open up mods to the console community. What are your thoughts on this? Is this something that uh, I know we talked about it back when Fallout announced it, but now that it's seeming like these uh, yet another open world game wants to jump in on this, how do you guys feel about it? Let them do what they want to do. That's that's really interesting to me. I doubt I would ever use it myself, but like these are really popular things. And like I, it's great that a company, and I can definitely see CD Projekt Red doing this kind of thing. Um, it's great that they embrace this. Something you wouldn't think that they would want to do, but the fact that they do, like, allowing the people to change their product. I don't know. I it's like the kind it. of company they are, I feel like. Yeah. But. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat there. I, it's not something I'm personally interested in, but there is a large group of people who are interested in it. And I think it's a smart move because... There are a lot of people who would choose the PC version of the game over this if they could just for the, the purpose of the mods. Mm-hmm. And so maybe if someone doesn't have access to the PC or whatever, uh, it's good for them that they can get this. 
And I, I would fall into the realm of somebody who this really interests because I, I was so interested by the Skyrim mods that they did back when they would they would do all kinds of and you had like Dragon Ball Z Skyrim mods on PC and stuff. It was really awesome. You could like she command man waves across uh, Tamriel. It was really awesome. But uh, there's like oh gosh, it scared me. There's <laughs> there's uh I don't know how much I would do on the creating side of the mods, but I'd love to like use the mods. I know in order to first use the mods, I need to play the game <laughs> first. <but laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, mo- the modding community is one that like really kind of stretches the bounds of what may be even acceptable from a developer standpoint of what can be done with the game. I mean, there's Skyrim mods that are pretty graphic, and there's GTA mods that are similar things. And I think like people are getting so excited about mods coming to consoles because they see this wide river that is available yeah. on, on PC that isn't going to be available when you start getting Sony and Microsoft at the table talking about bringing these things onto their consoles. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's also true, too. It's definitely going to be. It's like when people talk about, and this is this is a great leap, like um, like making marijuana legal. And it's like... Yeah. It's no, like, you, you know yeah. what I'm saying, though, right? It's like, um, yeah, it's going to be legal, and that's cool if you like that, but um, it's not going to be the same thing that you're... Uh, that you're tooting up every, however often you do it, it's going to be like Tooting a government up, process. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be government regulated. It's going to be taxed. It's going to be mm-hmm. all these things that like you don't. You may want it, but then when right. you get it, you're like, this isn't what. I'm no, this isn't. Take. This isn't what I'm the head in mind. And then it's still going to be illegal for you to get the quote unquote good stuff. Gosh, especially a fair tax when you're paying like thirty percent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but a- anyway, yeah, I. I I think people are expecting something out of this that we're not necessarily going to receive on the consoles. And I'm not really interested in the modding community anyway. I know a lot of people are, but I'd rather just play the game they want us. I have a hard enough time playing the game they want me to play. Yeah, you never finish anything. Look, man. <laughs> I just like to hey, have a hard time. Hey, I just like first it. of all, that's going to be my gaming resolution for next year. I've already decided that I'm going to finish the games that I buy. And let's just talk about someone who broke their... Uh, their New Year's gaming resolution. All right, you didn't finish your <laughs> resolution, <laughs> which was that you weren't going to pre-order. Uh, no. Cry, baby. Oh, I'm no. still not convinced you're going to stick with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-two episodes later, forty-one and a half. It's not. Over it's yet. like it's like episode six seventy, and he's like, seriously, man. I'm just I'm counting the days when you just give up. I'm just on edge every Monday, thinking <laughs> you're going to call me and like we're not going to do the podcast anymore, man. Uh, Mad Brock says it will definitely go through inspections on console, and absolutely, like there's there is a reason the library of games is smaller on consoles than it is on PC because there is much many more requirements in QA and in testing and and all of those sorts of things yep. uh, that they have to pass. And the hardware is completely standardized; that you don't have this wide variety. Yeah. And people handling different things. I wonder. This is a. This is kind of a off the wall question. It may be completely bogus, right? I don't know. If this Larry's is, hand goes through the wall. I don't know if this wall. is even able to happen. But like, within modding, can you like implant a virus in the mod? And like, when they open it to play the, the mod, like it renders your console useless. You could pretend something was a mod and trick someone into downloading it, but I don't see that happening in the consoles because of that reason, it being inspected so much. Right, and I think that's a... Uh, I guess that's what I'm leaning to. Like, that would be a heavy reason why they would expe- inspect it so heavily, or a reason why they would inspect it so heavily. But I don't know. It's, it's, a, weird, it's a weird thing to think about. All right, next item on the list. Former Double Fine dev Justin Bailey, along with another a bunch of other guys, launches FIG, a crowdfunding site that allows the backer to profit off of the success of a project. So essentially, this is uh, another crowdsourcing op- option for... Um, let me see. Uh, it's another crowdsourcing option for video games where people will be able to introduce a product, people can give money to it, with the expectation of not just receiving a physical copy of the product or some sort of, you know, just uh, some sort of product back for it, but rather you are investing in a company and you will receive a return based off of the success of that game. And so if I back um, some sort of small indie game that only sells a couple hundred copies, I may not even get a return on my investment. Whereas I'm, if I back something that's uh, made by one of these big name developers like Kickstarter has seen uh, over the last couple months, then I may get a bigger return on those sorts of things. And so, um, 
what are you? Well, you guys saw the article on Polygon. It was a, it was a long form article talking about you know the the birth of this and the thought process behind it. What are your thoughts? The crowning. Of- <laughs> can, we, can we just name this episode birth? <laughs> yes, yes. Equity crown funding. <laughs> yes, there we go. Um, what were you guys' thoughts when you when you read about this? I think it's an interesting concept, and I think there are definitely people who want this because there are people who misunderstand Kickstarter and think that's what this is in a way. Um, but the other thing that I've seen from Kickstarter is that the kind of people who do support these projects, if they support them through FIG, they're definitely going to have to start understanding that you may not get anything back. This yeah. thing may fail, and you may never see whatever it is you paid into it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, interesting. I like it, and I like that you don't have to be some licensed investor type. Uh, you any Anyone can do it. I think that's really cool. But you also don't have to be any established known game developer to go on there and make a good looking video about a cool game that you've got an idea for before taking people's money. It's much more of a risk reward kind of thing than Kickstarter. You know, Kickstarter I might back you with, you know, sixty bucks in the hopes I get a physical game back, but and then, you know, maybe it doesn't happen, I'm out that sixty bucks. But this is much more of like you have to go in kind of understanding the finance and that's one of the things is like how transparent are these people going to be with their finances to because essentially you're an investor Investor. Like you are a stock owner in uh-huh. this in this game, at least. And so, how transparent are they going to require people to be? What are the ethics behind uh, putting something on here and then dealing with your investors? Uh, how much of a say do I get in the creative direction of of that game as somebody who is investing in it? And I'm I'm no lawyer, but uh, I wonder about the legality of it. Like um, in, in regular investing, if if a company just a CEO just takes your money and runs, like that CEO goes to prison, correct? <laughs> like I'm no lawyer. <laughs> Most of the time. I would, think. <laughs> I would vote yay. Would this have a similar... It's investment like, fraud, right? Some, 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 I don't know. I don't know anything about law. Uh, Ryan, uh, now Ryan Howard did bird in the law. office. Let's, let's, can we just get the district attorney on the phone? <laughs> I got yeah. you. I'll call. <laughs> Ryan Howard went to the jail for that. That is a TV show. Yeah, or you were talking about the Philadelphia Phillies first baseman. I learned so Either much way. The, he, they were both on that show, actually. Moving on. All right, we're talking about Kickstarter. I when I when I first heard like first Not thing about this fig, I'm this, sorry. Uh, this situation, like it sounds like an awesome thing. Like you you it's like sharing and, and trading stocks without the e trade and stuff and it's something that you actually enjoy, video games. So it seems like it seems cool like in concept, but then when, the more I hear you guys talking about it, the more I'm like, Yeah, this that that kinda sucks. Like I feel like I you test your luck more on Kickstarter than on this thing, because I, because somebody could just like bamboozle you, and there's no chance of anything, anything from it. But I think what Larry and I are getting at is that this site may offer more protection from being bamboozled. It doesn't mean that the game's going to be successful necessarily, but the game is going to have to get further along in its development before just dropping off completely. And being an investor, I imagine there's going to be some requirement for communication so that we don't have a situation like we talked about a couple months ago where there's just absolutely no communication from the people who've taken your money. So um, I don't think it's necessarily that... uh, Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily that it... I don't think it sucks at all. I think it's a great option, especially for people who expected Kickstarter to be something like this and it didn't end up being. And so... uh, Obviously, the natural progression in this is that Kickstarter was then asked if they were going to uh, start an equity crowdfunding, and this is from Polygon. Uh, Kickstarter answers, it doesn't, that it doesn't want to. This is a quote. Kickstarter has no plan to offer equity crowdfunding. Kickstarter's mission is to help bring creative projects to life, and we welcome more options for creators, end quote. That's from just a representative uh, at Kickstarter. So uh, go ahead. And even even though, like, even if it is not as safe as we think it is and eat, like even with that higher risk, though, there is also the higher potential for reward. Like, let's say you invest in the next big Halo or the next big console. Like, all right, cool, you're rolling in the cash, but yeah, higher risk, higher a, reward. I wonder if there'll be a cap on your reward, though. Like, it'll no matter how be, successful the game is, like you're, it would be to determine on your investment, I guess, maybe. Well, with any investment, you you negotiate for a percentage of a return. I would imagine. So if I provide, you know, a few thousand dollars, I get X percent of the sales of the game or the profits of this game or, or whatever. I don't I don't claim to understand a lot of it, but 
there there's money to be made here, but it's just about it, but just like Kickstarter, it's going to be about digging through all the crap to find what's good, find the nugget of good, and obviously those things will probably rise to the top pretty easily. But then the more they rise to the top, the more and more uh, people the the shares will be divvied up among. Right. But and I'm glad Kickstarter's not going this route. And uh, like let these two things exist separately. And now. When people come to you on Kickstarter wanting this crowdsource, like that, like something that's an investment option where it's equity crowdfunding and all this stuff, they'll have something to point to and be like, we're not that option, but this is an option for it. And FIG and Kickstarter could maybe have a very um, homeostatic relationship with one another through it um, because of so many people who misunderstand Kickstarter thinking they're investing in a product and not, uh, not just backing a project. And uh, I don't think there's... Um, I don't think there's really anything – we have this tendency to believe that if something comes along that looks at least even a little bit similar to something that already exists, that thing that already exists needs to change its course of actions. And, and we take that route in so many areas of life, and I think it's good on Kickstarter to say, like, we're not going to be blown away with the wind on FIG, and, you know, if FIG becomes uh, something successful in the next couple of years, maybe we'll reevaluate our options. So any other thoughts on that? Well said. All right. Well spoken, sir. Um, oh, you were going to mention something. Yeah, I was just, uh, I, I found it interesting. One of the guys backing one of the first games that's going to be uh, available on FIG is the actor who played Hiro Nakamura in Heroes. And did you look at his at that game at all? It was kind of interesting. It's about exploring other planets. And uh, so you're this alien, and it, it's kind of uh, tied up in kind of a commentary on the history of our space exploration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it looks like an interesting game hmm. um matt brock says there could be the pr benefit for the game company investors are going to want it to do well to get more return so they will be vocal about their games and absolutely yeah. uh, like i was uh hanging out with brandon a couple weeks ago and his dad has stock in exxon and so whenever he goes to get gas he will drive by two Valeros in order to get to an Exxon to put gas and stuff. And whenever he talks to people, he always sends them to Ex the nearest Exxon station and stuff like that. And so same thing with gaming. If I have money invested, it'll be like, hey, Larry, check this game out that I backed. And then you would look at it and you'd say, I'm going to buy 14 copies of it. <laughs> yes, that's what I do with that way. That way I just have <laughs> one in each one of my cargo <laughs> pant pockets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm also going to buy seven digital copies. <laughs> For all of my digital cargo pants. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next item on the list. Rainbow Six Siege has been delayed to the first week of, de uh, of uh, December. Very odd. Not the not necessarily the delay, but the fact that we are going to still have the closed beta coming in on September 24th. Uh, this game was set to release on October 13th. This is from an article on Video Gamer. Um, and Ubisoft came out with a quote that said, quote, This wasn't an easy decision, but based on the feedback we received and based on our in own internal test, we felt there are adjustments and improvements we can make, including improving the co-op experience across all game modes, weapon and gadget balancing, as well as menu and interface navigation. We're taking a little more time to make these changes, and we think it's the right call, end quote. Yeah, it could be very well the right call in terms of producing a decent game, but that just puts them in a real bad spot coming right after Halo and Battlefront and everything else that's coming out this holiday season. And that article mentioned that, and I think that is definitely a valid concern. Um, so I think they're going to really need to rely a little bit more on setting themselves apart as a different kind of gameplay. Mm -hmm. And this is a different kind of game, so they can oh, do sure. that. But uh, they they definitely stand to be a little bit more challenged coming after those other shooters. Yeah, I think December's, a, December's also just a really weird time to try to release a game that close to the holiday. And investors want to see like an immediate return on these sorts of things, so they're looking at the week one sales of this game. And I think a lot of people will just sit back and say, well, I'll just wait for gift cards to roll in or for Christmas and for those sorts of things. And uh, I think that's going to affect at least the initial sales of it. And, and, and then that'll, that'll in turn – What's the word? It, it will modify the way that the investors look at that game in terms of making a sequel or, or coming after it, you know. And it's kind of in a dead zone both ways because the gamers are going to wait on their gift cards and their Christmas money, but the parents are going to be getting their Christmas shopping done before they're far into December. Yeah. Most of them. Not my mom. She's last minute. <laughs> last minute mama. 
And I think the only other major game coming out in December this year is Just Cause. Just Cause 3. I, think I, b- I believe maybe. so. So, um, yeah, this is this is odd to me, but it, the Player 3 podcast stance on delays is if it's going to make your game better, do it. Right. Like, we're not going to get up in arms about you delaying a game. Hashtag and, no more unities. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like he listed everything in the game that needed worked on and improved. Let's see. What all did he mention here? He said the co-op experience across all game modes, weapon and gadget balancing, menu and interface navigation, like all of these things. The good thing about it that he didn't mention, if I if I'm reading this correctly, is he didn't mention anything about the net coding or anything like that, which I guess they're going to get a better picture of that like on sep- in after September. After the beta, yeah. Uh, after that beta. But uh, – if they can deliver a solid online experience and all that stuff is just tweakable, like weapon and gadget balancing and all that sort of stuff. I'm excited about this game because I, yes. I want something a little more grounded than what we've been getting as mm-hmm. of late. I'm, I'm excited about how destructible the environment seems to be. For those who like, hate drywall. Yeah, I just, I just want to, like, they've got the hostage in a room and you guys distract them while I run underneath and put charges and do the Bugs Bunny thing and mm-hmm. have they basically cut a hole underneath them. Have they done a percentage yet of, like, how much it is? How, like, I feel like if you had enough gadgets, rate. it'd be like 100% destructive. Like, you could tear down all the walls. It looks like you had a lot of freedom, but yeah. I don't know. I doubt it would be everything, though. Like, I don't think you could tear the house down because then you wouldn't have really a map. Uh, or uh, or think, survivor to to rescue. Right, I think right. Ben hit the nail on the head about how they would limit it. It seems like you're going to be limited by you don't have enough explodey things to yeah. <laughs> yeah, take this house too. down. Yeah, you got whatever you're equipped with. Try me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll f- we will look, find the weak point. You just got to look for the cornerstone in the house. We find the glitch and find like the one place in the foundation to just take the house down. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know that I brought my They're Gallahorn. All- the survivors are dead, but so well, that won't matter by the time this game. That won't matter by the time this game comes out. <laughs> they're nerfing Wolfpack, man. Come on, taking away Wolfpack round, shaking my head, Destiny. <laughs> oh man! All right, next item on the list: gamers are going to be able to vote for the next game that Press Play developed. Press Play uh, was the developer behind Max: The Curse of the Brotherhood. This is from uh, Major Nelson. Uh, it says, starting today, Press Play is opening up the studio and the whole development process to gamers just like you. This new transparent development initiative. Which is not, if, if that's not the most PR sounding name ever, I've never heard a PR sounding name. This new transparent development initiative is about giving the community a chance to provide feedback and help Press Play create the studio's next game. Over the past months, Press Play has been developing three concepts and to show just how, uh, how much influence the community is going to have, Press Play is letting you decide which of the concepts they should develop and turn into their biggest game yet. So here we ha- have them. Here are the three. Uh, we have Project Dwarka. Is that right? Dwarka? I think so. An action-packed first-person co-op game set in a dark fantasy world. Team up with a group of friends to become a band of legendary dwarven treasure hunters and explore a procedurally generated underworld filled with gold and monstrosities. I imagine you are tiny enough to explore the crevasses of the human body, and that's what they're trying to get at here. Crevasses. Treasure hunting. Crevasse. The nuggets of gold. <laughs> then we guy's have... Nose. What? Your guy's nose. Yeah. You said gold nuggets. I'm just thinking about boogers. <laughs> boogers. <laughs> and then we have Project Carew, which <laughs> obviously, it's, this is much shorter than both of the other ones. Uh, oh, no, it's not. This is a whole other paragraph. Never mind. Uh, a physics-based multiplayer construction game set in an open world. Build complex machines out of, a simp- out of simple blocks. You can build any type of vehicle you can think of and use it to go on adventures. Then we have Project Knoxville, a third-person multiplayer action survival game in which players must both work together and against each other. It goes further than any game when it comes to dynamic relationships and spectator interaction and makes you wonder, how far will you go to survive? So, before we talk about the concept, let's just talk about these three projects. If you were to set a vote for one of these, which one of these would you vote for? Did any of you follow through, go to the voting page, and look at the in-depth stuff on these games? No. No. Do it later. Uh, Do it. Initially, I wrote a thing about just how utterly disinterested I was in all of these. And then I went and looked at them, and they've got trailers and stuff for them already, too. And the Dwarka thing looked interesting, and I would play it. But the Project Knoxville looks amazing. It's like it's like a uh, TV show contest kind of thing, kind of playing off the Hunger Games stuff. And so you mm. drop seven contestants in, and you've got to work together to survive. But you also could pull ahead by betraying somebody. And so, like, one of the things in the trailer was 
this person hanging off of a cliff and they're holding on by a me- medical bag mm-hmm. and then the other guy's holding the medical bag to hold them up and he just cuts the straps and lets them fall to their death. Huh. Mm-hmm. But if you betray too many people, you, uh, you're by yourself, you don't have enough people yeah. to do what you need to do. And also, if you are killed, you, you have some ability to interact in an afterlife. Uh, you ha- I don't know how limited you'll be, but like you can spawn a wolf near the person that uh, mm. was an example that they gave, near the person that betrayed you. It That's looks like cool. a really interesting game, I w- and I immediately went and cast my vote, and I would beg all of you to do the same <laughs> for Project Knoxville. Project hmm. Knoxville. That was the one that sounded interesting to me, but I also am from the mindset that that like, survival mode game that, like that's kind of saturated but if it looks that cool then it could change my mind that was my thought at first too was that's so saturated but this looks so well, different no, i was i was even thinking it sounded like a bear grills adventure like yeah. in a game but um the, the hunger games thing I, I i don't know why we haven't seen something like that until now i don't know what yeah. you guys are talking about that card game sounds awesome card game Caru. card game <laughs> The Karu game. Car- My only question Car- is, Car- if you're in this atmosphere building cars, where are you going to adventure to? I to another place to build a new car? <gasps> oh, Ben. No, <laughs> ben. I don't understand what's happening right now. <laughs> the car game. It's not about cars, is Well, it? he said you build whatever you can car build, you want. You can build vehicles. It sounds like it sounds like Minecraft, but with the ability to make machines. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I really want to do that other game, <laughs> that survival game. <laughs> I, when you started reading oh, them, I was right. like... it is vehicles. I misread it. I apologize. It's okay. I started... Uh, all of them sounded good to me, but then that that la- the description that Larry so aptly gave us is making me really want the third one. Yeah. When I, w- <laughs> I, like, I was like, I don't care about any of this. Oh, here's a link. I'll click it. Oh. Oh. This is cool. I want this. Make this mine. <laughs> I wish they would make a viable Hunger Games game. If this would be it. I would be shocked if anyone made a movie game. That was worth playing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Something smells amazing. I know it smells like pizza. I like it. it so Is good. your wife making a little like microwave pizza? She might be making a pizza. It smells delicious. All right, now on to just the concept of being able to vote on which project. Like, what 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 are you guys' thoughts on the concept as a whole? That's pretty cool. I love democracy. So, I mean, I would rather try to get. Like be able to be involved in the process somehow, even though again it is all up to the electoral college in the end. I feel um, like this is veiled democracy, just like America. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> they took our jobs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I really like the idea of it um, because I would definitely don't give a crap about either one of those other two games, but that this Hunger Games game, <laughs> which is what I will call it from now on, <laughs> uh, Hunger Games. It sounds, it sounds like it's right up my alley and all of our alleys subsequently. Project Hunger Games. Gosh, it's the kind of game that I see friendships being ruined over. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like the division, I, like yeah, yeah. Division, <laughs> <that> division's <laughs> or when I booted Luke out of our party in Destiny. And <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, the division we aren't allowed to ruin our friendship in. We all made a pact not it's to betray true. one another. You know, I'm a pact breaker. That is breaker. a legally binding pact, Ben. I am a pact breaker, Benjamin. Why are you looking at me? Why would I break because we know who the person. Okay, today we're playing Madden, right? All right, right, and uh, no, and I select no. the, it, Ben always plays with the same positional player every single play, and I selected a run play for a particular side of the field. He switches his who he's defending with at the beginning of the play, like before I snap the ball, and I go, "You were screen looking," and he was like. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes, yes, you were. So you are going to be the dude who we're carrying out some awesome loot. And you're like, I want all the loot for myself. I'm going to kill everybody. And then we come to your house and we literally kill you. That's a, a it, was a, it was a milkshake bet, Larry. What? A milkshake bet. Exactly. Oh, so man. the milkshake bet's off, right? Because no, he cheated. Yeah, if you cheat, it's I didn't off. cheat. Screen There's looking the... is the oldest form of video it game is cheating. cheating. It is not yes, cheating. Yes, it is. Your vote on the matter? Yeah. It's not a cheat. I'm going to rip you apart, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eviscerate you on this podcast. <laughs> Be- <laughs> Evisceration sounds awesome. Before we get too far away from the uh, thing we were discussing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I feel like we're going to move on soon, so I want to throw my two cents in. This concept, I've already, last week I think I really threw in my... Uh, I, I really discussed my hatred of full-on democracy. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to stick with that. It's neat, I guess, but... Uh, Ultimately, I just got to wonder what's going on at this company that they would waste resources on getting this far on three games. And they're yeah. like, all right, what do you guys want? Yeah. I, I'm kind of like, 
are you that out of touch with your with your market with your uh consumers right and it makes you wonder like for the people who they've paid to work on these other concepts when that when that concept doesn't come to fruition and those people get moved on to these the project that won like is it going to be handled with the same care and passion or are these three totally different teams that they're going to just tell two of them like we'll see you yeah. We were going to dedicate resources to this one. And so either way, it, it it could end poorly, but I'm also a pessimist in these sorts of things. But I'm with you on the whole democracy thing because you don't know what tier of information these guys, are, these people are voting from. Did they just read the three sentence paragraphs? <laughs> did they just watch the short trailer or did they go in and they go like you did and watch everything that is available for these things to make an informed decision? And uh, which is the reason we need the electoral college. <laughs> I will admit I didn't watch anything on Karu because it had <laughs> I was not interested in all of building anything out of square. Yeah. Well, I think we can quickly vet what we don't like, but what what we like, we need to dig more into and see if we really like it. You don't want to build a like really? giant mecha robots like Pacific Rim and tack things. Man, we just talked you into Karu. No, you didn't. I know. I'm just it's not just vehicles. It's mechs too. I mean, if they can show me that I am. Very tiny microbe size and exploring the human nasal passages, then I might vote for the first one. They need to combine these concepts. So you are dwarves in this Hunger Games arena where you are building vehicles Mechs to attack each other with. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The wolves don't stand a chance. We have rocket launchers. <laughs> we have galahorns in our wrists. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next item on the list. Uh, PlayStation revealed their special edition consoles for Star Wars Battlefront, and it's this one with Darth Vader on the front, and then the controller made to look like his uh, chest plate is what hey, people got, are saying. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, and, yeah, that sucks. And uh, all right, yeah, let's talk about this first. Like, what are you guys' thoughts on the console itself? Definitely sucks. I like the console, just not the controller. Very minimal effort put into it. I think you just slapped the. Outline of Darth Vader on the top of the console. Hey, it's Star Wars. Four hundred dollars, please. Boom! Picture. Yeah, and the controller is atrocious, hideous. Yeah, hideous. So we are all in, in consensus yes. that this was lazy. I think Very the much. Nation is in consensus. Okay. Well, some unsatisfied fans responded to limited edition Star Wars PlayStation Four with their own image. And I think the uh, own images. This is. Uh, I think these are cool. So here's one with an ATAT on it, and I. I for those listening on the audio, sorry uh, that you can't see these. Go over to uh, Twinfinite, uh, Twinfinite dot net, and you can you can see this article. Uh, I, I think that one's cool. These are cool though. They where uh, they're using the the power status light bar on the PlayStation as the lightsaber in their hands. Yeah, that's neat. Like I think that's really cool. I'm not really big on like I feel like this this C three C three PO one is exactly the same as the Darth Vader one, except yeah, they just yeah. changed the color and slapped a picture. But the Stormtrooper one looks pretty cool. And then the R2-D2 is cool, but that was done with the 360. So uh, what were your thoughts on these? I, I'm in line with the people who are like, e like even with these, I'm like, okay, that's neat. But uh, the the different sounds and stuff, I think, were good ideas. Like the they, they mentioned last gen, the R2-D2 Xbox 360 that made the R2-D2 sounds and all that. Um, yeah. yeah. You call, do, are these more expensive than a normal... No, I think they cost the same. Then, yeah, I can't. Actually, I really can't fault them for just being lazy with it. It costs the same. But but if they're trying to excite people, I don't think just throwing a picture on something is going to excite most people. Well, and is there a more critical fan base of anything than the Star Wars fan base? No. so Not at all. So to do something this lazy, I mean, they had to have expected, like, we're going to unveil this and everyone's just going to be like, meh. You know what they should have done? Tell me. Change the shape of the PS4 <laughs> to where it actually looked like an ATAT -AT standing up in your living room. Mm. And you could just put your game in the ATAT. -AT. And then it shoots it back out in the it, form. It just, wa it just walks <laughs> towards you and, like, you hop on it. And that's how you play your game. Like you get on it, and there's the controller pad in the back of the it gets, ATAT. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. And first in my mind, it was just a different shaped PlayStation. Then it was, you know... Like a like a thirty to one uh, to replica of an AT AT, and now it is a full scale AT AT. Then you're inside. It. You open the hatch. There's a full big screen TV with the PlayStation Four hooked up to the TV, and that's your console. But the PlayStation Four just has a picture of Darth Vader painted on it, and you hate it. Right. <laughs> 
But you have an AT-AT, so it's all, it's all good. <laughs> For $500. Back where we began. <laughs> no, no Kickstarter. $500. AT-AT. You get a, a full size ATAT for five hundred. Functional, full functional ATAT. My bachelor pad. <laughs> ATAT. You know what the ATAT is? Your home. It is now mine by way of my actions. All right. There's a little uh, expansion pack for Destiny called the Taking King coming out, and this is where a I'm gonna, little expansion pack. And this is where I'm going to back away from the mic and just let oh, you guys talk about it. Goodness. So, uh, so the floor is yours over the Taking King. This, it's we want to alternate. Looks, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just have a little convo here. I mean, it just it looks like it it it, it borders between a whole new game and D game. exactly and DLC like which is it um it's going to change the whole game as we know it I don't, I don't to know begin which with. one it is exactly <laughs> and like like they're go- with this whole Nolan North uh, scenario they've got going on where they're going back and kind of rewriting um Tyrion Lannister Peter Dinklage's lines Dinklebot. Dinklebot's lines and they're redoing the story and like the, like the process of playing the story in terms of quest lines and so I'm going to have to go back and play the whole thing through again mm-hmm. into the Taken King it's just there's going to be so much to do, and there's so many new exotics, so many new economies and processes to kind of learn processes. to comprehend. Processes. Yes. Processes. Um, I'm not even going to know where to begin, and I'm ready to be lost. And that's coming right after Metal Gear Solid 2. What mm-hmm. are we going to do? One thing I was really glad that they addressed, my big concern was what they were going to do with a slight level change and our concern of are you going to drop down or whatever. And, and they addressed that. And um, whatever your level, your highest level that you have right now with the light level is, that's where you're going to be grandfathered in as far as your player level experience mm-hmm. was. So if your light level takes you to level 32 right now, you're going to be level 32 when light level stops mattering. And light well, level. Not necessarily. Th- that was one thing yeah. I'm kind of iffy on um, because what they're saying, what they said was that. And you can go. It's like it's on the app and like the most recent weekly update. Um, they're going to take the average of like your character's gear on, like with them, not just what's equipped on you at the time, but like kind of an average of everything that you have in terms of weapons and armor, because those will average your new light level. And they're going to determine your level based on that average. Um, now, I don't really understand how that works. So I'm wondering if certain characters that have more armor or less armor are going to be leveled up in different ways. I'm not really sure. I may need to go back and re-listen to it, but I was pretty sure they said whatever your highest light level was. It did seem that way, and I'm I'm hoping that that's what it is, but then I saw that thing about averaging your armor and weapons. Well, that's how the new light level works. That's not that doesn't have anything to do with the grandfathering in. That's from now on your light level will be the average of your all of your attack and defense stats. Okay, we'll see. And uh, uh that's what that's exactly what I hope, but I just I read that little tidbit and I was saying, yeah. And then that'll modify how much attack and defense you have right further. So but at the very least we know we're not dropping all the way back down. Yeah, and for sure. Right. And that's that was one of our main major concerns in term like in terms of going into Taken King weeks in advance. So I'm alleviated. Our vault space is going to double. We're gonna our some of our weapons aren't going to be as effective as we hoped they were going to be. But you know we're going to have a ton more of them. They're saying that the commons that we're going to be getting are going to be as strong as our current legendaries. Yeah. I was really excited to see the new heavy weapon, uh, swords. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can carry a stinking <laughs> sword. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to die all the time just trying to close the gap and stab somebody. That railgun thing looks awesome too. The new ex- yeah that exotic um, fusion rifle. Yeah. For the heavy. I think well, I'm I'm excited about the vaults. The vault space is really cool, but I think the I don't know between there's I'm I'm really excited about the exotic blueprint thing where you can go back and get like even exotics you've dismantled you can go back and buy with legendary marks, which is really awesome to me, and it gives you a list of what exotics you haven't. Well, it's not a list, but you can see like yeah, see the in ones. the package what you haven't gotten, and where they're doing the same thing for shaders and um, other armors and. Uh, banners, things like that. Yeah, it's just it's a whole revamp of the game, and it's just it's so much. And I'm so ready. Yeah, the quest. Have you seen anything about? Did you watch the interview, Larry? I'm sure you did. But um, I only watched a couple. Like I watched some of the clips. I didn't watch every bit of it. Did you get to finish watching it? Yeah, yeah. The the thing they talked about with like you know the gunsmith thing mm-hmm. where um, where you have like a reputation and all that. They have the gun like whatever they call it, the gun days on Wednesday. Right, yeah, you get a you can like get a free gun from him, and you, you go and like use it and um, try it out and to, like complete bounties with it, and mm-hmm. then you can get 
you can get the gun from him for free if you like if you do enough stuff with it. Right. That's really cool. I think that's a cool way I to make it. I also really liked kind of the same thing you're saying like mm-hmm. in terms of Crucible. I love the fact that you can level up now by like just doing whatever you want to do without doing just the in-game materials like the raid. That's great. Um, yeah. The thing with the they're adding first of all I think five more bounty slots. <laughs> mm-hmm. And because so everything you're going to be doing is going to be with some degree of bountyism, um, <laughs> I really like like if you do all the like the weekly your crucible and vanguard bounties are going to be kind of weekly things instead of daily things now. But if you do all of them and you get to do the final bounty, then you're going to get some kind of either legendary or exotic drop guaranteed. Well, and like it's a uh, the way I saw. Well, I thought I thought the uh, except, uh, uh, mini strike. <laughs> um, you uh, who's the guy that does the crucible? Um, Lord checks. Lord, yeah. The last one, you don't actually have to do anything for it, right? Is that you just, uh, don't you just get it for completing all the bounties? Yeah, it might have been. I'm not sure. But I think it's well, a bounty it, it's, to it's, complete. It's a, all it's a little bounty in and of itself. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Whatever that entails. And which that's cool. Like if if that's if I'm seeing that right, like you do all the bounties and then whatever bounty that he uh, that the the last bounty was you. Don't have to like do something crazy after that to get that thing. You just go ahead and get it, which is pretty cool. Hmm. I meant to uh, get my hands on. I, I have like the GameStop thing. I should be getting Game Informer, but I'm not. I need to make sure they have my address right. But uh, a friend of mine told me that the Game Informer this month has a lot of information. Yeah, it's, it's a full article in and, there, and some of it's stuff that wasn't covered in these videos. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to. I don't want to spout any of that off without having read it myself. So right, right. I'll have it, some comments on that next week, maybe. It's nothing too wild. It's just like it goes into some more detail about the Dreadnought. It has like actually a little map of the Dreadnought. Looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be a lot more detail to it. But this is kind of like an overall. Yeah. Um, kind of get your bearings, get prepared. Um, a lot of information in that article. Now that you mention it with that article, though, I remember reading a part of it that said that talked about the light level being definitively like what light level you have now being your level. Okay, cool. I don't know. Because I heard of, I've seen that part too, so I don't that's know. Just, that, that's me. I'm not saying that I'm like totally, totally worried about that, but I always like to be prepared. Yeah. Because I've been surprised before. And with the thing as a whole, uh, I am excited about it because it looks like they're going to give me a lot more freedom to play the game the way I want to play it instead exactly. of forcing right. me to do what I want to do. But at the same time, I am going to wait until some of you guys get your hands on it and confirm that what I expect is what happens before I invest in it this time I'm, around. I'm definitely getting it. So, I mean, I, that's I'm, that's I'm definitely fine. getting it the night of, and I'm going to play the crap out of it. Yeah. Nice. As well. Nice. <laughs> Are you, uh, the, the one thing we haven't talked about is probably the hugest thing with this is the subclass, the new subclasses. Um, we're not the hugest, I guess, yeah, but I one mean, of the biggest I like, things. I like the fact that they kind of questified that, too. Like, they're working into the story. It looks like they've put a lot more work into the narrative um, mm-hmm. this go-round. And even even in terms of going back and reworking, um, you know, the interactions with your ghost and things like that. So it looks like they're going to make everything a lot more cohesive. That's why I'm kind of wanting to go back and kind of play the story over again with uh, different characters to try to, you know, redeem that aspect of the game. But I'm just... <sighs> I'm so ready for this. Yeah, excited. Uh, Did you guys see where the Warlock's al- new alternate class was almost a necromancer? Yeah, that yeah, that yeah, would be yeah. cool. And they said they haven't totally discarded the idea. So yeah, that's the it, thing it, that Luke mentioned was like if PvP would be uh, viable with using it, like it, if it would be something you could actually do. In right, PvP. they would have to find some kind of way to work that in. That would yeah, be hard all, to balance. Well, cause, well, and because the whole concept is that your ghost resurrects you. Yeah, you know? and so it would uh, maybe in PvP the way it could work is that like. You hit somebody with it, and they don't realize they've been hit with it. But all of the other people, like their team, appears as enemies, and your team, appe- and so for a couple lives, maybe they uh, the, their points matter for you. That's interesting. That'll be cool. That would be so you're much. you're so smart. That would be. I've, I've been, that's all I've been sitting here <laughs> thinking about because I'm like I really didn't. I really don't care much about these but changes. I, I, I personally would prefer to be a Sith Lord like this. This new warlock has, class is with that arc damage. But the problem with that is if I'm in a party, yeah, uh, then my friends will be like, "Dude, you're shooting us." I'm like, "Okay, I'll just sit down." Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but yeah, that's a good point. I'm or, sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, I was done. I oh, was sorry. Done. What if it was just you stayed for your team, but for the, the, a couple lives, your points were just counting for uh, for the other team, and that you work. you didn't really realize it? Because I think that would be a little harder to realize. Yeah. Yeah. But it is kind of confusing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 
I'm sure they'll be, I'm sure they'll be working on something. Especially if you're like going to tear, like you're just just you're just doing awesome. You oh, killed yeah. like so many people, <laughs> and the guy, the warlocks are just laughing because you've you killed so many people for for them. That's be really funny. <laughs> My little puppet master, <laughs> dance. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, though, I think we're all pretty excited. Minus Larry. If, well, you're excited. I'm but cautiously like, excited. Larry yeah. is cautiously optimistic. Luke is just riding on the fence. Riding well, I'm cowboy. not really riding on the fence. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm a little disinterested. There's so much stuff coming. Yeah, like Destiny's not really at the forefront of my mind anymore because there's there's other things coming that I'm excited about. I've headlong divided, divided, dot Dovin. Dovin. And I've <laughs> I've done this song and dance before with him. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah, like this is how uh, how you guys feel now is how I felt in August of last but year. To be fair, they've it seems that they really have learned because between the the launch of the initial game and the launch of the Dark Below their first DLC package, we went into those blinds. We would only seen like a public event, and you know what we got from the alpha and the beta. Um, there being a lot more forthcoming with everything about the game now they're doing weekly live streams to kind of kind of right. get kind of get you prepared for what's coming um in a lot more depth and that's something that we definitely didn't get with those first two iterations of the game right so but in all fairness we also thought they had it figured out you know by making three blockbuster games that's true <laughs> but so, that's true <laughs> and they did make claims and they went back and apologized for that eventually but they did make claims that they didn't live up to yeah. So that's true, but the fact I like now that we're able to actually see at least a lot more. Like we're able to actually kind of go in and see what we're getting. Right, but and we got to go in and see what we were getting before. With only, the but, beta. but only a very small part of it, because it, like we all know, that level. What could you get up to level eight? Yeah, the game doesn't start until twenty. Right, as it stands now. So we didn't get to see absolutely any of that. And now we know all about the Crucible. We know that we can play that and get to do whatever we want to. I don't know. And we've Which, still got we've still got what, three more weeks? Two yeah. more weeks? Three more weeks. The sad thing with, with that with I mean, that understanding that the game that starts with twenty, with Taken King, a lot of the weapons, like the higher level weapons that you can get, especially the upgraded exotics, you can't access them until level forty. So Well that's that's a that's a common that's every MMO. Yeah, I know, yeah. but it's just just makes me sad. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> sad about it. I just sad. So it, it's not. Uh, I mean, have at it. Oh, Be yeah. excited about it. Oh, like, yeah. I, I'm not trying to, but I'm just saying. Like I've been here. I've been where you guys are. You're last gonna, year, you're gonna see. I, I'm. I'm very confident in this. You're gonna see it, and you're gonna. You're gonna want it. See, I am very confident in that. I am going to see it, and I may get it, but it won't be out of some like strong desire to have it. Mm, okay. Yeah, it'll be because I'll just want to play with you guys. But like, I'm more excited about Halo Five. I'm more excited about uh, Battlefront. I'm more excited about Rainbow Six Siege, Madden 2K. Like, there's just there's so yeah. much coming out. No, I'm, I'm excited about those things. All right, next item on the list: Fallout Four developer response to graphics and gameplay criticisms. This is from GameSpot. When Bethesda announced Fallout Four earlier this summer, not everyone was pleased with the post-apocalyptic role-playing games, graphics, and gameplay. Now, Bethesda's marketing chief Pete Hines has responded to those criticisms as a part of a new interview, saying it quote definitely doesn't upset us. And then he goes on, as with uh, most forms of entertainment, you never get 100% agreement on anything. And so at the end of the day, whether it's what the graphics look like or whether the gameplay is what you want or whether you like the setting or whatever it is, everybody is entitled to their opinion, end quote. I and, like this guy. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, like, when we saw this, this was kind of <laughs> – that was the that, that's the first initial response. Like, you're going to respond to the thing that you see. And so we saw it and we were like, well – the the character models and the movement is still a little weird, which, you know, chalk it up to an art style or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, is like they're just worried about different things in the game. But go ahead. Uh, I I like that they've got this approach of well, this is the vision we have for the game. We're gonna do it instead of just trying to make everybody happy. Um, I and and I've always been that guy that's like graphics don't mean nearly as much to me as basically anything else in a game. So. Cool. I'm cool with this. <laughs> right. So you're saying, like, it, even if our decision makes a subsection of our community unhappy, if it's with the direction that we want to go, then you're cool with it. Yeah. And there's no such so, thing. So, like, if Halo says, hey, 
New direction. Oh. No split screen. Oh yeah, and if those people don't want to buy fall over graphics, yeah, that's okay. fine. Don't support them with your cash. Okay. Like, I'm not supporting Halo because they've chosen to invest in graphics over the super important split screen system. Okay. <laughs> super. It's never going to be perfect. I mean, you can make, you know, one the highly the most highly celebrated games of all time, and there are going to be a lot of stupid that hate it. <laughs> yes, those are words. <laughs> a lot of stupids. I think it's important that, pe- that especially in an industry like video games, that aren't always taken seriously for like artistic uh, expression. Like that's what these games are to me, at least. I mean, it's it's an art form. It's most of these games that have stories, like they're they're written like novels will be written. Like they're it's played out. Like you're, you're playing a book out, or you're playing a, a story that somebody's really thought deeply on and. I think it's important for them to go the direction they want to go and to not cave in to try to make everybody happy. So I'm with you, Larry. I think that's very important that they have the free, the range to express what they're wanting to express. And the thing about Fallout is that it has such a unique aesthetic to it to begin with. So like them, them, the graphics are definitely better than they yeah. were in Fallout 3. They've done a lot of work with the lighting and things like that. So this is not on the same par with Fallout 3. But at the same time, like this is their vision. Buy it or don't buy it. I'm picking it up. The the criticism I don't get is the gameplay is too similar to Fallout 3. I'm like, Call of Duty, Halo, Fallout, <laughs> Elder Scrolls, like... Everything left, with uh, a like, number on the end of it. Yeah. That, I mean, that's that's how it goes. Right. You're, I, I don't expect to see this dude wield a lightsaber and suddenly <laughs> I'm flying an airplane. Like, it's... <laughs> It's a Fallout game. Well, that's like that's like people were people were upset on Facebook last night because of Fear the Walking Dead, and they were they were displeased. And it's like, why? It's like, wait, what the crap? This is a Mario game because it's not the same thing that the other thing is. He doesn't have a machine gun. He's not killing a bunch of people. I don't. I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand that kind of thing. Like, something is not as good as something else because it. I don't even know how to put it into words. And I think it's just people want to complain. That's yeah, all that's there is true. to it. Some of the, some of the it's, time. It, all those, that, that kind of hipster mentality is kind of bled Contrarianism. To, to everyone else where you're just like, well, something's new, uh, so it automatically sucks, but I'm going to love it in like 10 years when it's not new anymore. Yeah. And, yeah. My- my, uh, you know, Facebook does that on this day, and you can look back what happened. Mm-hmm. So, like, three years ago, I, I have this, I forgot I'd done this, but there's this Facebook status. Uh, I'm screenshotting all of your Ben Affleck complaints <laughs> about him being the new Batman, and when it comes out, I'm going to call all of you out on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. still plan on it, because I don't hear anyone complaining anymore, <laughs> and I'm going to go back and be like, all right, you're a liar and an idiot. I love this movie. You're this is the best Batman idiot. movie I've ever seen. This is the best Superman movie I've ever seen. I never oh, doubted really? Ben Affleck. Oh, oh well, really, fool? this screenshot I saved. <laughs> well, and the thing is, with these kinds of complaints, it's like, they, these complaints have always existed. It's just now everyone feels like they have an equal voice. And it, this is not always the case. Like, your your opinion does not matter as much as other people's opinion for so, in, in, some, in some situations. So, like, of course some fans are going to take issue with it looking too similar. There's always been fans that have taken issue with those sorts of things, that it's too iterative or it's not it's not progressive enough or however you, you want to – however they want to say it, like – just don't, don't listen to those people. <laughs> and flip it. Let's say it was totally different gameplay. It's not even a Fallout game anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And you know what? It's fine. Either way, whatever your opinion is, you can have that, and you can complain about it. And they may listen. They may not. If you don't like it, don't buy it. We can have these discussions. Whatever. But and the best thing about this game is that you can have sex with dogs. You can't have <laughs> sex with dogs! What? <laughs> no! That was the whole title of an episode. I know, I okay. know, I know. Okay. Okay. I'm trolling, I'm trolling. It's like R. Kelly says. Haters gonna I hate. I, Lovers gonna love. I don't even want none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to play Fallout 4. <laughs> is that how the rest of that song goes? <laughs> It's not our kill. It's Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I like that they're going to do what they're going to do. If we don't like it, we won't buy it. If we like it, we'll buy it. Whatever. Uh, because there are games that just ruin themselves trying to listen to their fan base too much. 
And you can go too far in either direction. You can be like, I don't care what anybody likes. I'm making this game about a guy who just drinks radiated water and lives in a trailer and never leaves. And that can uh, be the game if you want it to be. uh, I don't see uh, why not. Probably won't sell anything. (laughs) I understand this is a video game podcast, but I'm about to get real philosophical on y'all right now. Real philosophical, okay? Philosophy 3 Where's your corn, Ben? (sighs) It's not here. It's a teaser. Way to spoil it. That's a teaser. That's a teaser. That's a teaser. Um, You know, like... This can be applied to any anywhere. Like people, people have a tendency to try to people please. I feel like, and I'm I'm guilty of that in, on occasion. So to make everyone happy is an impossibility. There's no way you can do it, and there's no reason to seek out to do that. It's only going to lead to more hurt and devastation. <laughs> I laughed, but I'm I'm being serious. Like it's you know it's not. A, there's no point to to try to please everybody because every, somebody's going to have a problem with what you're doing. So. Even if you're not developing a video game, just be yourself and don't try to please everyone because it's going to tr- suck to try to do. Yeah. Cool. All right. I thought I thought Larry <laughs> just said that. <laughs> huh? Uh. No, he was talking about the development of video games. And what, no, you're just oh. talking about life. I'm just he, talking about life. He's applying it more broadly to the people. Just everything. Welcome to Life 3 Podcast. <laughs> so, That's what I just said. I know it's a video game. Just live podcast. your life with blatant disregard for anybody. <laughs> hey do what man, you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> do what you want to do. <laughs> say what you want to say. And let the words fall out, honestly. Oh, my gosh. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm out. All right, that's it. That's it for the news. <laughs> news with the podcast, guys. I got a whammy bar on my. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we move on to we have reviews. Reviews for you. Do you want to talk about this? Yeah, why not? All right, Seth. Talk to me. No. <laughs> you talk to me yes. about everybody's gone to the rapture. I love <laughs> everybody's gone to the rapture. I really, I really enjoy this kind of this kind of walkabout. Can you after you game. say that? Can you say if you mean it or not? Do you mean it? I, I don't know that I'm in okay. love with the game. <laughs> Thank you. I wouldn't marry the game. I wouldn't do the game. I don't. I don't. I don't <laughs> love the game. I love the idea of the game. Um, but I really, I really enjoy these kind of walkabout games. Um, and I'm kind of just getting into them recently. Like a lot of people are. Um, what's a walkabout game? Oh, uh, like what's the, just kind of like a walking simulator. <laughs> what? Well, you're right. just walking around discovering people, things. You're kind of walking around. You're not, like, not really like... action-driven. No combat, um, really. No combat. You're just kind of finding things, learning story. Um, this game, you're, you're a silent protagonist. You're kind of you, – you arrive in this town, and, I, and I mean, most people that have heard about this game kind of know the bare bones of the story. I don't really even know what happened in the end and kind of what – you. The great thing about the game is you get what you take from it. So you can go and try to find every little bit of story that you can. You kind of walk around and try to find either documents or um, like these little glowing orbs of light that change into kind of celestial-looking beings or kind of remnants of people that lived in the town that have all disappeared, that have been raptured up. And uh, you're kind of learning about the stories, like kind of how these people interacted in the town. And um, you kind of get little bits and pieces of what may have happened to them. Um, and your progression through the town just kind of depends on the things that you find. And um, I got to the end of the story, and I was kind of like, what? 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 <laughs> but um, the more I thought about it, the more I think that I kind of understand it, but it's something that I'm going to have to go back through when I have another five hours to kind of walk through it and try to find a little bit more of what I missed. Um, again, one of the great things about it is you get what you take from it. If you want to just kind of breeze through and get the bare bones of the story just to progress from area to area, go ahead. If you want to if you want to be obsessive and get every little bit of information that you can, do it and you're going to get rewarded that much more for it. Um like I said it's about 5 hours of gameplay. Um that seems to be about the consensus kind of depending give or take again how much you want to get out of the story. Um only and this has been covered. You have a run option, but it's kind of not really running. It's sort of like a, a brisk walk, um, and you kind of have to hold R2 in for seven seconds in order to access that. Um, but like I said, th- the the world is so beautiful. This is one of the best-looking sandboxes that I've seen so far in this generation. Um, it's just absolutely gorgeous, and it's that makes it that much more pleasurable to just kind of walk around and just observe things. 
Now, is it one of those games where you sit down and just say, hey, I've got, got four or five hours, so I'm going to just do this in one chunk? It can be if you want to. I took about three days, kind of just in like hour and a half, two hour intervals um, mm-hmm. to kind of get it done. Um, I wanted to, a lot of the trophies actually are really fun for this. Um, w- and they're kind of, you don't really get what they are from some of the descriptions, but like you kind of have to figure them out or look them up. One of them was just to like kind of messing around with the idea of interactivity in the game that kind of challenges you to do absolutely nothing for like five minutes. So you just kind of sit there and maybe like look around. Like when I did it, I kind of sat down the controller after finding a kind of perfect little view of the world and just kind of looked around with my own brain for a second and and kind of got a feel for the scenery just kind of took in that image um, one was like you're waiting for a phone call you step into a phone booth and just kind of sit there for a few minutes <coughs> see if anything happens it doesn't spoiler alert spoiler alert <laughs> but um and then things like there's one for going in and getting um like returning to and leaving um the local like physician's office a bunch of times like for the trophy called like hypochondriac or something like that <laughs> Um, because you're exploring, maybe you miss something, you return, you go back, if you want to find it organically that way. I just kind of stepped through the door threshold a bunch of times to get <laughs> it. Um, it's really interesting. Um, it's I got it for 15 bucks for breaking my pre-order oath. Um, I think it's $20. Wait, another game? Oh, no, that's the one, remember? Oh, that, that, that's the one I accidentally did, that. right. did it, which right. was kind of without thinking because it was digital. Um, <laughs> You're like you can't pre-order a digital Oops. game, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it's. I'd say it's worth twenty bucks, and it'll I'm sure eventually be free. Um, it'll be discounted. I'm, I'm sure fairly soon. Um, but it's free now if you can steal it. <laughs> if you can steal this digital, <laughs> game. If you can steal this digital game, like just hack the hack the servers. Um, it was worth the twenty bucks for me. Um, I I really enjoy things like that. Just kind of exploring. It's not something that I'm going to play over and over and over again. I'll I'll return to it eventually, but um. Again, it's just something you kind of, it's almost like reading a book. You want to take an hour or two, sit down, kind of explore a little bit, put it away, go play Destiny, go play Halo, something like that. A lot of fun. If I had to do it in a word, in a review, in a word, in a review, in a word. Review in a word, in a word, in a word. (laughs) word. (laughs) Letters in the word comprise the word. I have to go, like, just real simple, breathtaking. I, again... (gasps) <laughs> gorgeous world, gorgeous world, mm. stunning. Nice. There's Larry, a lot of words. It's not one. Talk word. to me. <laughs> <laughs> you played a little game called "How to Survive Storm Warning Edition," correct? I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> this may actually be true, and I actually mean that. Is it about tornadoes? No, not at all. It's about zombies. Oh. <laughs> uh, so it's it's the second free game with gold this month. Uh, so you should go download that immediately. I am. Um, Presently, I am, <laughs> I am stealing that digital game right now. <laughs> so I sat down last night at about midnight. I was like, "Oh, I'll try this for an hour or two. I I don't have to be anywhere in the morning, and my kid will probably sleep till eight. And uh, I looked at my watch a few minutes later, and it was four a.m. And I was like, "Oh man, <laughs> this is one of those games I've got to set an alarm clock when I'm playing." So the basic premise of the game is you're stranded on these islands and there's a zombie outbreak. You don't have any idea how you get there. They don't waste a lot of time with story. Um, and you have to survive and try to escape the islands. Uh, it's Sort of like Dead Island. That sounds yeah, awesome. Yeah, very similar. It, it's a, just like a top-down. Yeah, top-down, bird's-eye view kind of thing. Um, a lot of crafting ability. You can make all these different weapons and combine things to make food. It has it has all that. It's got skill trees, things you can upgrade. My favorite skill is, uh, I think it's called Daryl, and it's the ability to make crossbows. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. What's that a reference to? Uh, the Walking Dead, I believe. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you ever play the what, comic book? Can I? St- could you? Did you ever play Don't Starve? No, but we're, it's going to be even more similar to that in a moment. Okay, that's what, uh, I, that's what I was hoping. So you've got to kind of help survivors get the ability to hop from island to island. Uh, the thing, oh, before I get into that thing, uh, there's a constant day-night cycle going on. Uh, so at night, there are even scarier zombies that come out, and you got to deal with all that. The weather is constantly changing. Um, sometimes there's fog so thick you can barely see through it, and you just want to hunker down at night or you're going to get destroyed. Um, sometimes a storm comes up and you've got to watch for warning signs that lightning is about to strike or you will get struck by lightning until you die. And I hate it, uh, (laughs) or find a building to go into. So there's like no trees in this world. There are, 
why are they not getting hit by lightning? <laughs> uh, you know you're here. not supposed to go under a tree, right? Huh? You know you're not supposed to go under a tree, right? Yeah, but the trees get the lightning before yeah. me. Not all the time. It doesn't only strike you. Actually, most lightning strikes that hit people are they hit another thing first and then hit the person, such as a tree. Oh. Such as. Yeah. Anyway, you learn and forget <laughs> something new every day. I'm going to go stand <laughs> under a tree during a lightning storm. So the thing that makes this game really interesting and kind of sets it apart in the survival horror genre is it's even more oriented on survival. Uh, you've got a hunger bar, a thirst bar, and a sleep bar. And you have to keep an eye on those needs. And as each need deteriorates, it affects your character's stats and your ability to mm. swing an axe or to, to craft things or to aim. And uh, so you've got to be looking for stuff to take care of these needs while you're also trying to get off the island. Hmm. And, and so it, you got to strike this balance between moving through the game quickly and finding the supplies. And like I, I, I want to explore every nook and cranny, and I find myself exhausting the resources on the islands and then getting in a pickle. And uh, mm. so to pick, float away from the island? pickless yeah. cage. <laughs> so you got to find safe places to sleep. You got to find food. You got to find water. And uh, it, it's. Uh, the first couple islands, I was like, oh, this is an easy game. I'll breeze through this. And I got to the third island, and it was very difficult. And so uh, it gets more challenging as it goes. I really enjoy it, though, and I'm I'm probably going to stream some of that this week. Can you build shelter in this game? You can't build it. You can find it. Oh, okay. So. But it's, once you find it, it's pretty much like zombies start to overrun it pretty soon. You have to find a new shelter. No. There are safe places to sleep that zombies can't overrun once oh. you clear them out. Clearing them out is awful. It sets off an alarm and just draws hordes of them. That's how I died when I realized it was 4 a.m. last night. <laughs> is this game solely single player? Uh, there is a multiplayer component to it, either split, not split screen, but both of you on the screen or online. But I'm not sure if story mode is available or just challenge mode, which I did not get to. I did not try challenge mode. This yet. is a game that I would love to play with you if there is a some type of mode to play together. Prove yeah. it. Just like Burn dying light. is on you. I'll do, I'm going to do it I remember tonight. Dying uh, light. Sometime. I've only played I by myself. I remember dying yeah, light. <laughs> hey, I wanted to try to play with people, but then I traded the game. <laughs> yeah, I asked you guys several times. <laughs> you and Dizzy, wherever you are. I'm definitely going to play this game with you though, if it's possible, if yeah. you allow me to. Burn proof is on you. Okay. Word? Survival. Uh, I'm, it's A lot of games are survival horror, but this one is puts a lot more stress on you on, in that regard, and I mm-hmm. really enjoy that challenge. Awesome. All right. Moving on to everybody's favorite segment, the random question of the week. Random question of the week for the month for this week. Doesn't make sense. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I was listening to the Kind of Funny Games cast, and they were talking about holes in their uh, gaming library, and that's not what we're going to talk about. But uh, the, the, <laughs> the topic devolved into a rant about where mobile gaming stands in terms of like the industry as a whole, like how they viewed mobile gaming and i thought the the discussion they had was interesting and so i am admitting that we just straight stole this topic Mm -hmm. somewhat it wasn't an actual topic it's a piece of a topic from them what are you guys opinion on mobile gaming whether it be games you enjoy but also how do you feel like mobile gaming has influenced gaming as a whole and do you see it as like a legitimate gaming option when we say mobile gaming, do we mean any mobile gaming? Are we talking about cell phones in particular? Uh, we're talking about phones, like okay. not handheld gaming. Okay, uh, okay, that's yeah. the difference of terms. Um, yeah, we've had this discussion kind of before. Um, like, we had this discussion of whether we would consider someone who plays exclusively mobile games a gamer or not. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of ways, I wouldn't. It's it's kind of a different culture, a different style of gaming. Um, uh I think that for the most part, the platform is just littered with games that aren't worth playing. They're just drains on time and trying to trick you into buying more stuff. But there are some games that I really enjoy on the platform. Uh, there's one game in particular called Hero Forge, uh, and it, it's kind of a turn-based game. You you have a you pick one of three classes of character, and you have different attacks you can do. And there are green blocks, three types of green block, three types of red block, three types of uh, blue blue in addition to uh, some yellow blocks and some sword blocks. 
and you've got that it's bas- color. it's basically a three dimensional matching game, and you've got to match all these blocks, and your opponent's doing that during in the same like twenty seconds that you are, and so the more you match, the more attacks and stuff you can launch, and then it cuts to this cutscene where it shows you two uh, executing the attacks in the order that you managed to complete them. Kind of complicated to explain, but uh, it's kind of a who can match things the fastest and what kind of strategy you employ. Uh, I love that game. I play it all the time. And then, and then you're all about some Ingress too, right? Or is that anymore? Yeah, would we consider? Yeah, yeah Ingress is definitely a mobile mobile okay. game. I haven't played it very much, you know, since Remy was born. But yeah, that that game's a lot of fun. Driving around, you don't want to be like driving slowly by, like kind of trying to hold your phone over here to capture the point. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the child in the car, I understand that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, mobile games one of those things that I don't really think about too often. I have I've played some, I've enjoyed some, uh, some not so much. Um, I just there's something about just that console experience that just speaks to me, and that I could just sit there all day long, as long as I can eat and stand up and and go outside or elsewhere or elsewhere for a little while, I could just come back and do it all day. Uh, it's something about that experience even if you're doing it by yourself whether you're doing it with friends on the virtual couch that's what gets to me but um in terms of thinking of it as a, as a platform i guess you could see it that way um but it there's a lot missing from that 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 every other platform has if that makes any sense mm-hmm. and for me the mobile gaming platform is more about i've got 5 minutes and yeah. i'm trying to kill time or whereas Platform gaming is something that I go to because I actively enjoy it and seek out. Yeah, that's that's leisure time. Um, mobile gaming just seems kind of like a filler. A, a filler. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and I let me look. I don't think I have any games on my phone. I, I think I have Words with Friends, but other than that, yeah, Words with Friends is the only game that I have, and the Is It Tuesday app. Hold on, it isn't. <laughs> it's not Tuesday. I don't know that I'd call that a game. <laughs> yeah, it's not a game. I but. had that Walking Dead Assault game on my phone once upon a time, and that was that was pretty fun. I never, I played it for maybe a day, two days, and then kind of tired of it. Yeah, I just I just feel like on the mobile platform, there's not really a an overwhelming passion to make good mobile games because people are so content to just waste hours and hours playing Angry Birds and And because Candy also Crush. if you think about just price point difference, like there's a reason like you can only do so much with those things. That's why most of them are like two, three, five dollars. Um a plat a real like a console game, especially triple A titles, are total media experiences. There it's a combination of novel, it's a combination of film, it's a combination of uh everything. Mm-hmm. Kind of all mixed into one medium, and that's what's so great about um, about gaming in general. I think that's something. Again, it's really hard to tack on to mobile gaming. Right. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, I, th- to you. I, I think for me, like I, when I think about mobile gaming as a, as a platform, I don't think so much. Of, and I, I'm kind of with you, Larry. Where I don't, I don't, I wouldn't consider somebody who spends a ton of time playing mobile games a, a gamer per se, just because it's so it's so different. But um, I think like. The mobile platform itself is served so much better in like a companion side to your game. Like I think about like my Destiny app, I use the crap out of that thing. Like, and you can transfer weapons between your guardians in in the middle of fights and stuff, and you don't have to like go back to the tower every time you want to get some out of your vault. Like it, that is so much more convenient. And having a companion to that game that actually works now. That's a qualifier. It's got to be a companion that actually like is useful. But um, for me, like since we're so, I'm so heavily console based, I know a lot of you got all of us really are so heavily console based. None of us would lean towards the the mobile at all. Um, for me, the utility with mobile, the mobile platform comes from like companion, and I I don't unless I'm pooping. Like that's all I really <laughs> want a mobile game for. <laughs> yeah, and I just. It, there is kind of this whole nother financial way of going about gaming when it comes to the mobile game. And the reason that I don't get into it very often is because I feel like every time you turn the game on, it's giving you an option to press the wrong button and buy something or take you to the screen to buy something. And it takes you to the, the app store or, or wherever. And uh, and it gets annoying where mm-hmm. when I'm just sitting down in, in, in a game, like, in you know, 
for some people it's a bad word like immersion i just want to be immersed in, in in that experience and you can't get immersed in a phone game even even games like uh like telltale games that they put on the mobile uh platform like you just the screen's too small and then the locations i'm playing it in I, there's no way for me to get immersed in it um but let me ask you guys this uh we i remember us having the discussion about the people playing mobile games being legitimate so i don't want to uh, bridge that again but is there any ways where the the mobile games the way mobile gaming is uh have influenced gaming as a whole and uh, just in any way shape or form that you can think of that are either positive or negative microtransactions yeah mm. i'd say that's the main <laughs> that's the only thing that i can really think of that that's that is a huge thing though yeah and it, it works very, very well for that for that medium. And to be fair, I, I would argue that that technically started on console gaming with the first some of the first DLC that was like mm. buy this sword or buy this horse or like buy the disc at GameStop to install it onto your. Or like well, add it onto not your even game. like maps and stuff, but when they started those specific items for the game, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm thinking. That's of. true. But uh, but mobile, of course, took it in a very extreme direction. And further demonstrated that we can nickel and dime people, and they'll go for it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think that's been detrimental. Uh, well, to some degree. I mean, it, different games do it in either less or more tasteful ways. I'm trying to think of which came first. The chicken or the egg? Well, the chicken came first. What? What? For us what? theists. <laughs> Monotheists. Continue. But uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, like, I think about, like, the old like I'm trying to think of like old phones like what's the most what's the oldest phone you can think back that had a game on snake it? yeah snake snake from like the Nokia phones that yeah. did like yeah, the yeah, yeah. okay was there a mobile console that could do something like I'm trying to think if mobile gaming on a phone translated to I know there were consoles that tried to do the take your game with you thing but I mean there were handhelds before snake ended up on a Nokia phone yeah. The Game Boy. Yeah, the Game Boy. Way predated that. The, the Sega Game Gear. Okay, see, that's what I'm trying to do. I was trying to I was trying to figure out in my brain which came first. Yeah. Maybe not a decade. The only, Maybe. The, oh, sorry. I'm uh, thinking out loud. The only other thing, because I was thinking about this after the conversation, because Colin uh, in, in on the Kind of Funny Games cast was just talking about how, like, the mobile gaming market has just... It's it's tr it's tried to destroy the way that we view games, and he was talk talking in extremes. But I think there are two positive things. One we've mentioned before, and one y you guys may not agree with. One is that it's made gaming a more a more accepted thing. Because even if we don't consider people to be mobile gamers, mobile gamers would. And so it's we have a bit more of a connection point when it comes to us talking about. Uh, um playing a game and it's like well why would you want to play that well for the same reason that you spend four hours a day playing candy crush so you just do it in five minute increments whenever you get the time to do it and i just choose to take a couple hours at night you know to sit down in front of my tv and do it so uh it's created sort of like a, a common bond between all of us to some, to some degree and, and made gaming a more acceptable thing but then the other point is that i think it showed gaming companies that we can exist in spaces between free and sixty dollars, and and be successful still. Because you know you have games on uh, the iTunes uh, the the iTunes store that uh, the Apple store the App Store. There we go. Uh, that can be ninety nine cents. They can be free, or they could be ten dollars. You know, Flappy Bird. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and so games have started to realize like. Oh, we can release a four hour walking simulator for fifteen dollars and it be something that people will attach themselves to and that we will be profitable through. And I think it's kind of made a more it's made a variety in pricing models for, for the way that games happen and not just in terms of microtransactions. So those were the the only two that I could think of. I'm trying to think of some more. But it's not really happening for me. <laughs> well, and I think also with the touch screens, we've had to figure out different ways to, to input uh, like our commands into the game and also to figure out different ways to – because gaming for so long it was always thought of like, okay, well, it's adventure games and it's first-person shooters and like for the a large majority of time those were the things that you played. But mobile gaming 
I don't want to say it sparked creativity because it's also sparked a lot of plagiarism <laughs> also. Yeah. But uh we're gonna use Zynga. <laughs> but uh you know, there were there are different concepts that have to be made when you're just using a touch screen and you don't have, you know, fourteen buttons to press. Mm. And so I don't think it's all been negative. We look at the microtransaction because it's annoying and because we see games starting to maybe float towards that. I, I honestly think games like Madden and FIFA are going to release free-to-play models that are mm-hmm. their ultimate team thing where they're going to fully survive off of selling packs and selling, you know, and the microtransactions and those sorts of things. And uh, view that as as you may, but, like, I think there have been positive influences for mobile gaming. When you think about the – you're talking about the, the having to be more complex with your control schemes – Looking at touchscreen, there are games that you that are that I would say are almost impossible to plan that to translate from a touchscreen uh, control system to a console. Like you just aren't able to. Like when get they tried to, the, to sell Angry Birds for fifty dollars at PlayStation 4's yeah. launch. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I missed Star that. Wars Angry Birds. Wasn't it Star Wars? Yeah, it was Angry Star Wars Birds. Angry Birds. Here we go. Angry Birds PS4. And that week, that week, incidentally, it was the free game on the on the App Store. <laughs> you can get it now for twenty, for less than twenty. But when it came out, I think it was fifty dollars, and it was like you could play this for free on your phone. Yeah, is it just Angry Birds. Yeah, That's yeah, it? Well, it was like a Star Wars Angry. Yeah, Birds. Star Wars Angry Birds. Seriously, that game and the thing scary. is, is if my nephew would have been uh, old enough to to beg for stuff at that time, he'd have been like just wanting that game hardcore. The most interesting uh, use of mobile gaming I think I've seen was Minecraft on phones and, and iPods and all that. The youth group where I used to work, uh, like every one of those kids had that, and they were constantly on the Wi-Fi playing Minecraft together. Mm. And so that was kind of cool. And I'd jump on when they weren't supposed to be on and burn their entire world to the ground. is great fun. Yeah. Great fun. It's great fun. They'd be like, Larry is on, get off, sign up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm burning down their houses. Oh. Burning down the house. Good times. Awesome. All right. Great yeah. discussion. We've done about all we can do, huh? All yeah. Right, let's go around the circle. Um, let's do, uh, let's just keep doing media you've been consuming. So go ahead. Okay. Media I've been consuming. Um, this is my consuming noise. I'm reading a book called Non Sacred Pathways. Uh, it's actually a really good book. I can't remember non, who wrote non it. Non-sacred or nine-sacred? Nine-sacred. Okay. Who uh, are you and where can my we name find is, you? My name is, uh, my name is Ben. Um, you can find me. I'm actually on Twitter again now, and I'm actually tweeting pretty regularly. Uh, Notra Hankins, N-O-T-R-A-H-A-N-K-I-N-S. Um, you can find me on Xbox at uh, Who Bomb Trady, all one or three words. You can find me on PSN at Who Bomb Trady, all one word. And I will be streaming The Taken King uh when it comes out, so you can find me on Twitch at Who Bomb Trady, all one word. Um, and along with the non sacred pathways, I've been playing the crap out of Destiny. I know that's, I mean, but I have def. I got a, uh, I got two of my secondary guardians from zero to thirty in like two weeks. I mean, zero to thirty-two in two weeks. So I've been just playing a lot of Destiny. Going ham. Yes. Right on. I'm set. <laughs> um, you can find me on uh, PlayStation Network at Buttzors. It's B-U-T-T-Z-O-R-Z, Buttzors. Or on Xbox Live at Dongzors. That's D-O-N-G-Z-O-R-Z, Dongzors. I've kind of got a whole lower body thing oh going on. Um, Monopoly. With my names. I didn't want to say fact, Monopoly. Monopoly, no. in fact. It is Monopoly, but... It's legal. Do not um, pass. Yeah, I'll, John be D. Playing, I'll be playing a lot of Destiny. Um, if, if anyone wants to play Destiny with me... I From the vault. I'm we got to do the re- resets next week. I'm so. working on doing my Queen Breaker's bow tonight, probably. Getting that... That's a cool name, the Queen Breaker's Bow. It's a, a cool, fusion it's rifle, a cool sniper weapon. rifle. It's terrible. It's awesome. It's awful. <laughs> Is that all the media I, you've been consuming? Uh, it's been the majority of it. I'll be playing until dawn this week. Um, and maybe if I f- if I'm just feeling real affluent, I'm going to be picking up the Years of War collection. Also, <laughs> that might affluent. wait. Affluent. I'm Larry. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Lair Hunts Zombies. L A R H U N T S Zombies. Uh, I've been reading a lot about demonology and exorcism in preparation for some teaching. <laughs> that sounds weird. Uh, <laughs> and Dr. Helsing. And over this here. is going to get even weirder sounding. This is totally unrelated. But my wife and I recently started watching a uh, hit show that we never saw a single episode of. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> so that's been entertaining. So you're slaying vampires and demons. Yeah, well, in Buffy, vampires are demons. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
Well, that's so, technically true, I guess. Uh, and this week I'll be playing some Titanfall probably, but I'll definitely be playing that uh, How to Survive game, and I'm going to stream some of that. I'm going to play it with you. Prove it. The I am going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. All right. I am Luke Croft. You can find me on Twitter at TK from Antioch. TK from A-N-T-I-O-C-H. And then, um, let's see. And uh, if you want to be friends with me on PlayStation, it's a Lodger Black Man. And then if you want to be friends with me on Xbox Live, it is Download a Hoagie. <laughs> Uh, as far as media I've, I've been consuming, uh, I've gotten really into Friends. I never watched it, and my wife is real into it, and I just always assumed I'd hate it. So uh, she was like, just try a few episodes, and now I'm hooked. We're we're through season four. Dude, we're um, both reliving the 90s. Boom, baby. And uh, then I'm hoping to jump into that uh, that anthology of horror that you gave me this week. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. sitting next to my bed, so one night I'm going to sit and, and read it. So. And weep. And weep. Remember, remember the whimper of whip dogs. That's um, the story I want you to read. So what's that? Really? The Whimper of Whipped Dogs. Is that in there? Yeah, it's, okay. that, it's the homework I was I was trying to get you to read. Oh, last okay. Week. All right. Word. I'll I will read that this week. Next time you talk to me, I will have read that. Don't talk to me until then. <laughs> All right. Uh, but this week I'm probably going to be. Uh, I have a ton of Madden videos that have gone up on YouTube already. Ben and I have played each other uh, a lot, and then I've got a chance to play by myself. Uh, some that's over on YouTube.com/slash Player Three Podcast. I've got a few more games to knock out there. And we'll, I'll be playing uh, with all the NFC South teams in preparation for my uh, for our franchise that we're going to have going. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be playing. I want to play Halo too. I also got real into Halo. Again Just Halo Two? No, no, no. Halo, Halo also. Well. <laughs> so uh, Gosh, yeah, how much fun we was still need to run the fourth game together? Yeah, and yeah. ODST. Yes. Yeah, we've only got a little bit of time before uh, Halo Five comes out. Oh, like t- two months. So three months. Yeah. A little bit of time. That's a little bit of time <laughs> in my mind. I'm a busy man. I understand. All Quarter right. Year. Well, we are the Player Three Podcast. If you're on, uh, if you're watching on Twitch, stick around for the after party lounge where we get to interact with our chat uh, some more. And uh, if you missed the episode, go to youtubecom slash Player Three Podcast. It's archived over there. We're also on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, all those Very. different places. Uh, I'm hoping to move all of our audio stuff over to SoundCloud. So that then Ooh. we can uh, do it. Uh, it's just a more viable option. We have better options in terms of. Uh, having unlimited numbers so we can do special episodes again and do all that sort of stuff. But uh, we are the Player 3 Podcast, and we thank you for tuning in. Player 3 Podcast! P3P. <sighs> That's not the song anymore. I know. I miss that song. All right. I can't wait till Diz makes us a song. The sign of love. Go ahead. Hello, and welcome to the Player 3 Podcast After Party Lounge, where butt bucks. No, it's not. <laughs> Let me finish. Are allowed. <laughs> They're forbidden. <laughs> All right. So we are now in the after party lounge. Uh, and uh, what's up to everybody in the chat? Sorry, Diz wasn't here today, so we couldn't really keep up with the chat. Well, there were only like three people. Yeah. Now, now, we're, now we're starting to move. Now we're <laughs> now, starting to now. move. You don't let them know, Seth. You don't kick a man when he's down. Now we've admitted our weakness. And yeah. These guys are like sharks in the we water. The, you can tell. In and the, they smell you, the blood. You can tell. In the in the stream. Yeah, I know. Okay. But not the new people that are here. They didn't know. Yeah, we we should be like, yeah, you guys missed it. There are 80 people There were three pretty great ago. people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. One of them was me. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Darwin. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Our Lord and Savior, Charles Darwin, over here. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh, thank you for the follow, Packet You're 43. Welcome. And thank you for the follow. It's Fonda Cox, and I'm just going to assume that's their name. All right, we got that out of the way. <laughs> What's up, Busy Moose? If you got a topic you'd like us to talk about, a particular question you would like to pick our brains about, drop it in the chat, and that is what we will talk about. Uh, we will not have a discussion about candy again because Ben's got like seven. Did everybody get upset about that? No, no one got upset about it. It was a great discussion. Okay, let me run the after party lounge then. We're going to talk about another category. Hey, we have a question already. Okay. Uh, this is from Packet43. He's been cruising through the gaming talk shows trying to get ideas for a stream that he's trying to put together, wanting to start a gaming news talk show with some friends. Or she. Why are you or assuming? She. I'm sorry. And would love to pick your brains on ideas and get some background info on how you guys got started and what went right and what went wrong. <laughs> how much time do you have for what went wrong uh, and, <laughs> and what you've done so far? All right. I like this question. 
Uh, first off, I don't whatever like you start with is not going to be nearly as good as what you end up with if you stick with it. So yes, yes, yes. And uh, it's cool because today we started a new show yep. talking about sports gaming. And so we were kind of going through all those similar growing pains again, just trying to figure out how to make all that work. And he is a he. All right. So I can assume. Uh, that's a construct of our system. <laughs> So let's just let's just kind of walk them through the history of playthrough podcast real quick. And uh, so right. back in September of last year, Destiny came out. The world was divided <laughs> and somewhat disappointed. And so we were among the people who had pretty strong opinions about it. And we just decided, like, hey, we hang out every Monday anyway. We were all we're all real life friends with real life children together. We've all adopted kids together. Um, So me and Ben and Larry decided to just start what was supposed to be a show every other week where we just talked about games that we were interested in. And then we player three podcast. Yeah. It's player three podcast. (laughs) And then uh, we kind of just enjoyed the experience so much that we decided to make it a weekly thing because it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun in the beginning. It continues to be a lot of fun now. Um, And, uh, we we started kind of getting more structure to our show and covering news and having segments and doing all that sort of stuff. Jingles. And, uh, having jingles, which Larry loves. <sighs> Those and, started early on. Yeah. I remember. Like you second have a episode. Show without jingles. I guess. That's right. And uh, there was always like this kind of leeriness w- from the other guys because I have a tendency to start things and not finish them. Luke has big ideas. And, and then they fade out. <laughs> They don't fail. You just don't. Do no, no, no. It. I said they fade out. Oh, oh yeah. they, they know yeah, it don't yeah. fade. They just abruptly end. Yeah, they fade out <laughs> in the same. Never mind. That's a terrible analogy. I'm not going to make it. But here we are, 42 episodes in, and, and I'm still strong. not convinced. No, they're convinced. They're convinced. <laughs> and so Seth jumped in with us, uh, probably around like 20, right? No, like November. Probably earlier than that. What, what was it like? November, Seth. Yeah, probably around November of that year. We started trying to dabble into live streaming in December then, but we didn't really understand it all that much. So we were doing like the playroom on PlayStation and just using the little mic on the PlayStation camera. And it was bad, and we were in a living room, and we were getting mad distracted and all that sort of stuff. And people were just telling us to take our shirts off. And, and we kept doing it and getting banned because <laughs> you can't show nipple on Twitch. <laughs> so we kind of dropped that for a while before we r- figured out how to use like OBS and all that sort of stuff. And uh then Diz joined us in January, and he normally runs the chat when he's here and uh, does an awesome job of that. And really, the reason that we started... Don't forget Gary! Oh, and Gary, who has cancer and only has a little bit of time to live. Gary's really? made up. He is an invisible I've person. I've been healed! <laughs> <laughs> he sent that seed money. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we started Player 3 Podcast just to have fun with one another and then we learned that it's a lot of fun to interact with the people that jump into the chat some days we got a lot of pool and a lot of interaction and then some days you know you just kind of power through and fight through the uh and some days we have a lot of trolls some days we suck yeah. we we have very few trolls compared to what i thought we would get though and when we get them like our usually our our regular viewers are typically like they just annihilate them. Yeah, our mods it's really great. do a good number on the... We don't have to say anything to the trolls. Sometimes we choose to because it's funny. Yeah. So, um, he's he's wanting to start this show with some of his friends, and he's watching us. He's watching other streams. We're not experts by any means, yeah. but we've been doing this for 42 episodes, and we have a lot of fun doing it, which is the most important part of it. So, if you, if you were going to give advice to someone who's like, I'm just trying to start, what would be some things that you... Would, would say to, to, to them. And if you have anything in particular you want to ask us about, again, we don't think we're experts about anything. But we we enjoy what we do. So. As someone who's tried to stream himself, like, just casually, um, the thing is to just keep doing it. And that's one thing that I don't do myself. Um, I, just, I just don't have the gumption to get on there and, like, stick with it and just keep stream every night or you know at a certain time like every once in a while the mood will strike me and i'll just jump on and stream for like an hour or two um and that's not really a way to develop a following or anything like that the the way that we've gotten the 200 some odd followers that we have and a lot of the really dedicated guys that we love that come in a lot of guys across the pond Mm -hmm. um that come and talk to us every week or at least or, or like at least download the audio portion of the podcast um we we got that from kind of fairly consistently We've had some time changes and things like that that have been unavoidable. But um, just 
getting back at it week after week after week, and that's kind of the follow through that we were all worried that Luke wasn't going to be able to to put up with. But he's done. Boom, baby, I proved you wrong. Boom, baby, once again, he's proved us wrong. Uh, I think the thing that you bring to it that makes this thing go is the structure uh we didn't have that at first like you said no we did not. and it's kind of atrocious to go back and listen to you want to sit down before you start streaming a, t- a talk show and you want to kind of hammer out like don't write an entire script of everything you're going to say but have a structure to it like every week we start off with the news and then we we no, we don't. We start off with the releases. Releases of the week. No, we start off with starting over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we start over, then we start with the releases, <laughs> then, then the news, and then the reviews, and then the random question of the week. And sometimes there's some variance within that, but, but there's structure to it. We know where we're going, and it's not just all over the place. If you're just sitting around talking about whatever, it can go on forever, and it can get really boring. you got to have some structure and move along when, when you've already gotten through the topic as far as you need to get through it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I would say a big imp- a big thing to consider too is like don't well, this is going to sound weird but don't take yourself too seriously. Like take yourself seriously but don't like you s- you want to have fun with it too. Like you want to if you're just being very uh uh who's the guy that had the big uh the big mustache that Walter Concrete. If you're being really Walter Concrete about it and you're just very stern and uh abrupt with your uh news then People aren't going to want to listen to you, but if you if you're fun loving and happy and joyous, and you allow people to uh, make great fun of you, then you will <laughs> have a good a good time. Says the man who once went at length into every gun that would be released in the Dark Below <laughs> expansion of Destiny. Yes. yes. So uh, so we'll also be having a an auto rifle uh, currently named Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes that will have that will have uh, that will have 120 damage. That's a good lesson um, too. You can get too in depth on a topic, yeah. and it may be really interesting to you. Like there was a time where I could tell you how much damage every weapon in Left 4 Dead 2 did, but most people don't want you to sit there and say every weapon and what they do. Right. Yeah, it's Just like say it's cool, it's good, it's hip, bang it's, bang. It's like pick a direction and go there. If you want to be an in depth Destiny podcast, you know you would talk about those sorts of things. Or if you want to be a in depth Left for Dead podcast, that's what you would do. Like pick a direction and stick with that direction. And we always just have kind of seen ourselves as guys who like to sit around and talk about games. And we just wanted to invite other people into that conversation and be a part of it. And you know when we're talking, we aren't going to all sit down and go over stats of things. And which brings up a good point is like. If you're going to start this with friends, have a, an open dialogue with them about what you're good at and what you're not good at. And if something doesn't work well, like we joke about it now, but we talk to you about it afterwards and we're like, yeah, next time, like just try to be more concise with it. And we do that all the time for each other, just yeah. about like how to be better and, and just always learning. Um, the, before you move on from that, your crew has to be able to be honest with each other or you'll sit there and get ticked off at each other for the things that you're doing wrong and it'll just implode. You yeah. gotta be able to have yeah. honest dialogue. And, and feel free to call each other out when like one of them one of you is hailing Satan on the podcast. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well and and the thing is is I'd rather hear it from like Ben telling me I'm doing something wrong than hear it from you know having thirty less downloads on the podcast because people are just tired of our crap. <laughs> uh that's really offensive. We're from New York <laughs> no, we're from Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good assumption. He asked what, where, what part of the South we're from. We're. Uh, uh, I think it's important, like in that same vein, like understand that when criticism comes, like you're not, like you're all trying to do the same thing. So don't don't take the criticism harshly. Like just yeah. do. I mean, we're all looking out to be the same way, and I think that's how we approach it. Like we're all looking to do the same thing. So. Just don't take the criticism harshly. Just accept it and understand that we're, you're all trying to be better yeah well and and then a couple things that i've really like kind of tried to embrace uh is number one is care about your audience (laughs) and that that takes on several different things like we do get people who jump into the chat and try to troll and then we always just like we don't take ourselves seriously so if they're joking us we joke we joke about ourselves back Mm -hmm. like we don't get upset about it and we've converted several people I know of that have come in thinking that they were going to be disruptive and be (laughs) jerks. And then they're like, Oh, these guys are kind of cool because if I call them gay, they just, they joke around about it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) yeah, They like hold hands and stuff. (laughs) And so, uh, but care about your audience and care about, uh, care about the people that take the time to listen to your content and consume your content. And, 
uh, and realize like you need to have a good balance of paying homage to the people who have listened to you for a long time. Like we've got inside jokes, like the set, the coffee on the dash thing is from an episode <laughs> back in. It's like episode January. 15 or something. It yeah. was like, it was so far back. The like, grand theft auto multiplayer was about to come out. Yeah. So like it, we have that sort of stuff, but then, you know, we have the discussion and we try to invite people into what we're doing, who it may be their first time coming in. But, uh, and then the other thing that I would say is always be evolving and, and like, looking for different ways to do content and add content and add segments. Like I listen to a bunch of podcasts. You listen to a bunch of podcasts. I know you've started listening yeah. to some podcasts and you listen to a couple. Uh, quite a few. Now. Oh, do you? None of them gaming though. Right. But it, you know, you listen to those things and you all kind of like get a general idea of what you want to add to your show. And uh, like, don't just be content with what you do in the first couple episodes and say, well, now we're in a groove. Let's go with that. Like, we're always adding and taking stuff away. It's like Bruce Lee said, you always grow or you die. That's a summary. I can't remember the big, long speech. And you've touched on this already in saying you care about your viewers, but I want to reiterate that. And uh, this is important in gaming talk shows, but if you get into streaming games especially, interacting with your viewers is important. Yeah. People don't want to just show up and listen to you Look and go you. away. Uh, they want to be interacted with. And so... Strike a balance. Don't be so distracted that you're running chasing everything somebody says. But uh, you also don't want to just leave them hanging. Yeah, and if you have a guy who can just be dedicated to the chat, like, that's huge. Someone yeah. who's, who's in there just inter- – because, like, when we're just doing the audio portion, we'll come back to the chat every now and then, but not near as much as we do, like, in the after-party lounge. He says, basically, I'm trying to get some of my friends from TeamSpeak, a PC – in PC gaming and mix them with my friends and other streamers from Twitch and then do a news section and then interview at least one new person a week, get a small bio about that person and what they bring to the gaming world. And for those sorts of things, it's like Larry said, that that stuff's all about preparation and making sure everybody's on the same page coming in. Like we've got, we've got a bunch of show notes that, uh, that we put together throughout the week and like, cause we know going in that what we're going to talk about and then, that's kind of just the roadmap to get from the beginning of the podcast to the end. And then, uh, and, yeah. And I don't want to like stomp your dreams right here, but, uh, the idea of interviewing someone who makes a contribution to the gaming world, it is challenging to get an interview. We've tried a few times. And so that like, I'm not saying don't go for it, but I'm saying be prepared to have to work your way up to where you matter enough to get an interview. Right. And don't just, and well, and don't just settle to just interview anybody. Because yeah. you want to interview relevant people and bring people onto your onto your podcast and onto your show that like really do make a contribution. Like, don't ask us to come onto your show. Yeah, we it, haven't contributed know. a dang thing. And also realize your weaknesses. That was the other thing I was going to say. Like, we I say this all the time, just in discussions with us. Is like we have zero insider information on games. Like, I have made, I have a couple connections with people that I've just kind of done the legwork to try to make, but we're not breaking stories or anything like that. And we realize people come by and follow and hang out because of our personalities and so we try to let those shine and so if we're in the middle of a topic and we start joking about something like we don't unless it's totally taken away from the essence of what the podcast is about we don't get upset about it because people are listening for the funny things that ben says or for seth you know hail and satan or for me gashing my mouth open on the podcast which was a great episode where larry cut his the roof of his mouth on a lollipop and bled for a few days <laughs> I would say the most common compliment that we've received, and we worked really hard to make this happen uh, because it was a challenge for us at first, is we get told again and again that uh, we don't interrupt each other like a lot of other podcasts do. We allow one another to say our piece. Uh, We don't do that perfectly all the time. Nothing worse than a bunch of people yelling at each other all at once. Yeah. Like an Always Sunny episode. It's it's just like like watching Fox News. (laughs) Who can yell the loudest? Right. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be that guy. And be willing to self-promote. That's the last thing. That's the last thing I'm going to say about it. Like, be willing to ask people to follow you and check you out. And, and people in your community that game, like, talk to them. And, and even people that don't game that may know people that game that you you hang out with, like, tell them to recommend the show. And, and we get listens and follows and all that sort of stuff that way, too. We made business cards and passed them out. Yeah, man. We got our GameStop to pass them out. They were awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm hungry. And I'm ready to do some stuff. I'm hungry. Let's get some food. All right, we're we gonna get some it. food. Some food for you. Uh, butt bucks are now gone. They're off the table. No more butt bucks. Butt bucks are going to something. 
They they, they lost seven hundred points on the market today oh. because of the financial crisis in China. Stupid, stupid, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna <laughs> well we're gonna get out of here. For those of you wondering, Seth's telephone number. It's 